Hello everyone. Welcome you all. And I am. Are you listening? Anybody? Can you answer? Sitting here. Do you listen to me? Hello. Hello. We can listen to you. Yeah. Thank you. I am uh, the moderator for this conference. I am Wazir Ali. I am from Pakistan. I am a PhD student at Sarli Smarat University. And, uh, I welcome you all at the conference. Hope uh, you didn't have to wait long for the conference because there were a few technical issues uh, to get connected. Thank you, everyone, for uh, your patience and uh, participation. We are just waiting for uh, uh, Dr. Rohana to start the proceedings. And uh, I request if Nurula uh, is there, because she's listening to me. Yeah. If if Nurula uh, Faria is there, if she is listening to me, so please uh, answer to me. Uh, okay, maybe she's not there. So uh, I request anyone, uh, one of the professor, sir, if you can please uh, recite two verses of Holy Quran and start uh, the day of the conference today. So I request you, uh, Dr. Adelian, yeah. Yeah. Nurila, yeah. Can, uh, can, can we start uh, the proceeding with the uh, uh, recitation of a few verses of Holy Quran with Dua to start the day? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, pardon me. I don't really uh, heard you well. Uh, I'm saying that uh, can we start our conference? Oh, yeah. Uh, the recitation, yeah. Of, recitation of Holy Quran, if you can request anyone. Uh, from the participants to, to start the day. Yeah, I think um, yeah. let me start first, right? <laughs> okay. okay uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we were about to begin our conference, please be seated very well. Um, I think that I have a note to make before we begin today's conference. Um, we would like to uh, seek your cooperation, uh, completing for attendance list. Uh, I will send you a uh, attendance link, attendance list link that we sent on our chat box on the below. Copy link. Wait a minute. Yeah, um, so uh, I have sent the link for attendance list. Uh, please, all the participants, uh, fill the attendance list so that we can make sure um, your name to be uh, sent for the a certificate. Uh, 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. doctor. Yes, yes, we can yes, we can hear you. Question number seven. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, please, everyone, please. Uh, it's already closed. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Let me chat uh, the committee first. Mm -hmm. Virtual schedule conference. I think that I will send it um later. Now, uh, please we open first. We can, we can start the program, Lula, Yeah. And yeah. Then we can do such things. So first yeah, we have right. to yeah first we have to start with the recitation. All and, right. Uh, now um thank you for everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good every um uh, good afternoon everyone. Um, Her Excellency Professor Dr. Rohana. SPD MPD, the head of Yayasan Pendidikan Transformasi Teknologi, the Honorable Dr. Krishnan Umar Chandran, respectable um, Yasir Ali PhD and Dr. Sunil Kumar Misra, Association Professor, respectable all participants of this conference. Um, first of all, let's thank to the Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who has given us um, some mercies and blessings so that we can attend this agenda without any troubles and obstacles. Secondly, salawat and salam may always be given to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who has guided us from the darkness to the lightness. Um, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Nuri Lafit Rasham Shuddin, who will be your master ceremony for this international conference. Welcome to the second international conference on education, language, linguistic, social science, humanism, culture science. And the theme is Global Connections, the Linguistic and Cultural Divide for Better the World. We would like to thank everyone here for making time to attend this remarkable conference. Ladies and gentlemen, on this occasion, allow me to introduce you to uh, today's agenda. First, we have the opening, second, welcoming speech, third, presentation by speakers, fourth, discussion session, fifth, panel session by presenters, and the uh, fifth, uh, all, and the last, closing. Distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, let's open this seminar ceremony by reciting Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Before we come to the main session, let us start this by praying first. So the event that we will hold on this day will run well without any obstacles. Pray based on individual beliefs. Begins. Then, uh, next agenda will be a welcoming speech. Um, allow us to invite Professor Dr. Rohana SPD MPD as the head of Yayasan uh, Pendidikan Transformasi Technology to deliver her welcoming remark and official open this event. Uh, I think that we have to check her first. Uh, is there is uh, Professor Dr. Rohana? already join us? I think so. She has some internet connection problem. Oh. So we, we have to move and we have to start the program. And when she will arrive, then we can connect her. So, oh, okay. we have to move. so I think we that we just yeah, we keep uh, the welcoming speech, right? So we have towards our next agenda which is I'll try. okay starting all right resume, we have to uh, call upon dr krishna krishna Chandran. yeah uh, so uh, let's uh, uh we we going to the next agenda for the presentation right yeah about uh, the global 
global connections, the linguistic and cultural divide for better world. All right. Dr. Dr. Krishnan, uh, can you Already. hear me, sir? Are you are you with us? Yeah. Hello. Yes. All right. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, Lola, yeah. We have to. We have I'm to. Move to the Dr. Krishnan. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. sir. The time is yours now. Please enlighten us with your uh, courage and knowledge. Thank you. Uh, all right. I mean, like, I, I think that I think that I will um announce first uh who is the health um the session right. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Wazir Ali. All right, now we proceed to the main agenda. Um, the presentation and discussion session will be delivered by Dr. Krishnan Umar Chandran as the first speaker, and uh, next will be held by uh, will be handled by Professor Dr. Rohana SPDMPD as the uh, second speaker. And also, this agenda will be guided by uh, Wazir Ali, PhD, as the first moderator, and Dr. Sunil Kumar Misra, Association Professor, as a second moderator. Now we invite our first moderator to handle the first presentation session. Uh, for uh, Mr. Wazir Ali, time is yours. Thank you, thank you, Dr. So I will request to Dr. Krishnan Machandran. So please, you can enlighten us with your presentation and your knowledge. Thank you, thank you. Ryan. Hello, Dr. Krishnan, are you with us, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, but we can see you, but we can't hear you. We, we, we can't hear you, sir. One second. Maybe you have some internet connection. So please. Hold on. We, we are not able to listen to you, sir. Maybe you have some... Like you have a problem? Yeah, there is an audio problem from your side. But we are not uh, able to listen to you. Maybe you have some, yeah, internet connection. No, no, hold on. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we hold for you to start. It's normal, sometimes it happens. Now, can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Yes. Right, right. right. Yes. So I'll, I'll talk through my phone and I'll uh, keep my screen. It is, it is fine, sir. Okay. 
this way this way we can be we can be connected okay so let me share my screen once Okay. Okay, sir. Please, uh, you, you can see my screen also. You can see, uh, you can see yeah. my screen also. Yes, yes. Now you you are visible, and you can be heard both. See, uh, global connections bridging the linguistic and cultural divide for better world. Uh, this is the topic on which I'm going to talk today to this uh, conference. I'm Dr. Krishnan Umachandran. I'm the head of Industry 4.0 and World Resources Webinar. See, uh, global connections, bridging on which I'm going to talk today. To this. Sir, there is, there is again a connection problem. Your voice is coming twice. If if you mute one... Uh, uh, I'm hearing it twice. Hearing it twice huh? one second. Yeah. yeah. So, it is a problem again. Dr. Wazir. Assalamu alaikum. Ask him either to, to, to close. Uh, to, they are, he is using two devices, that is why. Maybe Abu Bakr, here, Abu Bakr, no, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, hold on. There is a problem with the doctor's connection, so hold on, please. He is, he is trying. So please, we are trying to fix it. Now, now how is it? It is fine, sir. You can, you okay. can start. Can I start? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, global connections bridging the linguistic and cultural divide for a better world. And uh, I'm Dr. Krishnan Umachandran. I'm going to handle this session of about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, uh, you know, on to this uh, topic. Um, friends, uh, you know, uh, you know, we are all connected through the internet, and everyone is uh, being uh, in the world interconnected between ourselves. You know, so there's a lot of uh, interconnectivity and interdependence among us. Uh, and this is uh, happening only because of the effective communication which happens. So there's a lot of diverse backgrounds which have to be collaborated and for a harmonious and inclusive um, you know, connectivity, we do a lot of uh, transactions through the language and culture. Okay, so th these are the important uh, you know, milestones on which uh, our connectivity is bridged upon so that people are connected throughout the world for a harmonious relationship. See, when it comes to interconnection, interconnection is not a superior or a, uh, and a loosed uh, network. It is something which is a strong win-win network among people across the world. So for a betterment of a planet, we have uh, a lot of uh, kind of global connections pivoted across for understanding and uh, overcoming our barriers that helps us to uh, facilitate a better, better um, you know, connectivity among people. This is where uh, interconnection or bridging happens. So if you want to have a better bridging or a better global connection, there is a thread that needs to be webbed. That is nothing but a dissemination of information, a source from which an information starts and it transacts uh, or transcends to another end. It also happens during crisis and disasters and not only on a happy occasions. Collaborations are there when these kind of things happen. There's a lot of uh, economic activities fuel up and there's a prosperity across the market and the, the globe. So to address all these things, we have a lot of global challenges that needs to be handled. And this is not only when things are happy, even in case of disasters. So that's one of the important points we need to think about it. See, uh, coming on to the uh, you know humanitarian organizations, uh, even from uh, United Nations organizations or any NGO in your country, which leverages upon a global connection or go global uh, you know connectivity, is it is for having people from various cultures, from various languages, from various genders, from various divides, getting on to be connected through people. So if you want to have people to be connected, the only communication among people is the language. And this language is, again, geographically you know, dissected. You know, each people across the geography have their own language. But to have a common language to uh, transcend the uh, knowledge, uh, skills, or, uh, you know, um, uh, skills or any kind of uh, activity to, to be happening across the world, we need to have a better language and uh, understood by people. And then we have a lot of sharing of ideas. We have a lot of experiences to be uh, transferred and then forge a good friendship 
and connections across worldwide. These are the cross-cultural empathy that needs to go in, in this kind of a uh, requirement. So for this, a global connection which bridges people is nothing but the language and then comes the culture. Because people in their own herds of uh, uh, living, they have their own culture. And this culture is one which uh, either facilitates or inhibits the relationship across the world. See, for facilitating this language learning, we have a lot of apps and online courses across facilitated through internet. See, the, uh, also we also have exchange programs. People from one part of the country visiting another part of a country and then living through or uh, you know, uh, working on it. The fostering of mutual respect, if you happen to see, gives a better first-hand experience of different ways of life. The multilingualism, you know, what we have across the global market and the uh, in our employability, craveability among people and collaboration. These are all the things that is multilingualistically connected to us. See, the, for this kind of a diverse communities to be connected, you have to appreciate the culture in which it is transcending. So to understand the culture, we need to have a lot of relationship building which goes with happy festivals and also with kind of a, a, in a crisis that happens in their cultures. So to celebrate and overcome the differences, we need to have a lot of international travel. Internet is the one which makes virtual travel possible and helps us in bonding a lot of uh, co connectivity amongst cross-cultural understanding and global relationships. These are the uh, you know, facilitating tools on which we are working now. And this world is now, it's not uh, uh, you know, far away from people. It is more towards people because of the technology. Now, online transaction, online tra transactions, whatever, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the translation, which I mean it as a transaction of a language. No, it is bro broken down by language barriers. Whatever you hear, it, it can be translated to a vernacular, which is being understood by the people. There's a lot of social activism which goes on. And then we learn a lot from the other people's culture. And these cultures also foster diplomacy for peaceful relationships. And our educational system is also one which emphasizes a good perspectives for multiculturalism. So for all these things, we can spread globally, we can arise the awareness, and we can transcend borders between nations through, through artistic and educational exchanges. So these are the things which are possible, which was not possible earlier, which is possible now. Okay. So on to a virtual reality and augmented reality. See, you need not uh, visit various uh, geographies on a real time. On a, uh, on a real time, through a technology, you can get to know the virtual uh, connectivity and the augmented connectivity through technologies, which blends and diverses traditions, which appreciates cultures, which celebrates diversity in cultures. It, it also gives an opportunity for us to relish and uh, you know uh, get along with the tastes of cu uh, cuisines from across the world being uh, uh, you know, served across various tables in the world. You know, you need not be in one country to relish certain uh, cuisine. You can get it in your country uh, and you can replicate the cuisine also. So there's a lot of things which changes with the uh, people's uh, facilitation towards being entertained with whatever they see, whatever they hear, whatever they smell, whatever they taste, and all the deep learning inputs are now possible and it is being virtually given across the world. <coughs> See, it's not only on the aesthetic part of our living, it is also onto scientific cooperations. Today, a lot of scientific cooperations, eh, not only in the field of technology or engineering or max or whatever it is, even on medicine, uh, veterinary, on agriculture, we have a lot of things that are being uh, shared across the world. Institutions worldwide broaden horizons of uh, students, they ensure the diverse linguistic heritages, and they give a, a good sensitive and awareness for the global connections. These scientific uh, cooperations, which were quite difficult in the last decades, are now uh, are at a very easy pace for intuitively being connected across people. So we have to facilitate or we have to use the best opportunity we are getting through connectivity of internet and the emerging technology, which is bounding upon them. See, this uh, kind of a global connection, what it brings? It brings a lot of tolerance. It brings a lot of, uh, you know, it reduces our stereotypes. You know, all our prejudices are being, uh, you know, dismantled. We have a lot of cross-cultural friendships. 
uh, we have a lot of uh, storytelling across the cultures uh, and across the uh, geographies which can bridge our cultures which uh, translate at translation and interpret interpretation services are available across uh, you know the global uh, understanding there's a lot of diaspora communities which still maintain connections to the cultural roots and these are the things that uh, not only the host or the guest countries does but across the world it can be transpiring for a better harmonious relationship see a coming on to the environment global uh, you know uh, climate change and a lot of uh, uh, things are happening uh, you know which is affecting our uh, um, uh, life and livelihood a lot of uh, environmental changes have happened and to conserve the environment there's a lot of things that has to be taken across the world not only in each country but across all countries to connect uh, and bring in a lot of global uh, citizenship initiatives such as connecting businesses and communities are required to promote this technologies promote a lot of diversity and uh, they also include see united nations serves as a global forum but to facilitate all these things people should be uh, you know willing uh, to contribute and following up with the footsteps being shared as the global plans or uh, sustainable plans coming on to the art you know we are seeing cuisines we are seeing scientific requirement uh, we are seeing the art now coming on to the heritage pro uh, programs you know unesco has a lot of heritage programs which gives a lot of cultural landmarks worldwide and being promoted or preserved where every country every uh, you know culture has its own art that can be shown across for a diversity it can exchange programs across and facilitate along with the language and then it can help in celebrating multicultural holidays and traditions sometimes even multicultural marriages are also promoted by these kind of activities so everything is nothing but we we get into a kind of a same family and same relationship across the global uh, position now on the global network if you see virtual global conferences are now as like what we are having today on the uh, second conference uh, this is a global uh, virtual conference this is happening only because of technology and uh, we are cross border connecting education research and uh, skill enhancements we are having a lot of networks of professionals uh, research and uh, student exchange many things are possible these are all helping in bridging the linguistic and cultural divide and in addition you know if you want to have a real global connection which can have a inclusive understanding for our peacefulness in the world it is uh, you know bridging harmonious uh, inclusiveness among people this is the one which will help people to cross cultural or cross transit and uh, you know collaborate with each other for a better happy living so uh, finally what happens is the future belongs to a lot of connections we know we are all having diverse uh, thinking language gender and many things which are dividing us but if you want to have a unity to prevail within us the future will embrace global connection and it has to be celebrated with these few words i wish to uh, close my talk thank you for listening to me bye thank you thank you dr krishnan for such a wonderful presentation and you have uh, provided us so much information so before going to open the session for questions uh, i like to ask a question relevant to your topic sir are you with us because your video is not visible to us dr krishna sir can you hear me yeah i can hear you okay so i have a yeah. again you have the audio audio issue if you can resolve it before questions okay because you have the same same audio issue again we can hear you we can't hear you
Can you hear me? Now? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Question me. Okay, so there is a question from Arsalan. Arsalan, you may ask your question. Uh, thank you very much for great insight, sir. Uh, I have a question that how AI tools like the modern artificial tools help uh, in global connection. Can you repeat your question? Can you repeat your question? Okay, so how the advanced artificial intelligence tools helps in uh, global connections? Sir, he he is he is asking that how AI tools are helpful to connectivity. One second, one second, one second. Okay, see. Audio and visual are the ones which is connecting people uh, for language or for cultural transactions. Okay, see, this is happening only because people perceive things, see, you know, and uh, you know, communicate with each other through the audio and visual part. Okay, to this, what happens is the technology, which is the emerging, the emerging technology. technology. You know, it has a lot of deep learning inputs. See, what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we touch, everything has to be transferred from people to people so that they can understand and, uh, you know, uh, religiously transfer their knowledge or skills, what they obtain from these kind of inputs to other people and cherish the divide. See, because if you want to have people to have uh, inclusiveness, you have to accept the difference. If you don't accept their difference, what happens is you force on them what you think is right. But in culture, every culture has its own kind of practices that is right to them. So you cannot force on them what has what is right to you. So audiovisual is the one which makes them have their time and then relish upon their understanding of the input they, they got, got from the other cultures and other languages. Okay. Yeah, if there is any other question, if anyone wants to ask a question, Thank you, sir. So it all depends on the prompt we are giving to the artificial intelligence, right? Yes, correct. Not Thank only prompt, uh, no, no, it's not only prompt. When it comes to artificial intelligence, there are two things, which is called the ML, machine learning, which is yeah, yeah. connected to the sensory inputs called deep learning, and the deep learning enhances your machine learning. Okay, thank you, sir. Work on your algorithm. Any other one, if any other participant has any question, so we are waiting for your question. Dr. Krishna, I have a question that how effective communication can be bridged between diverse communities who are still suffering from natural disasters like flood, such uh, No, waves. what you say is right. See, technology can facilitate yes. only when it is being available. Yes, I am. I am coming to my main. After no, this, you know, in case of disasters and in case of a crisis affected areas, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, their li livelihood itself is affected. Yes. Ah, uh, so, so there you cannot talk uh, peace. You cannot talk uh, happiness. No, 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 no. no. You, you are not getting my point. I have ah. a question that there are so many problems around the world. We we just see the problems. If we talk about if at the moment there is a, a war between two countries, so we just uh, watch through videos or internet. It connects to us. But uh, when we are connected, people forget after one or two days to help them. So why 
this is happening. This is not just because every day we watch something new and we forget what happened yesterday. Is this also a, a real problem which internet has also created in the world? No, you are right. You are right. Uh, thing I see, uh, people have a uh, short-term memory. Yes. And uh, see, we cannot have long-term memory for uh, on our problems because if our problems are being uh, you know left around, uh, you know even if it is not satisfied, it is better to uh, keep moving rather than to stale upon or uh, being there in the same problem and hit on to it. No, I I just uh, like to discuss this thing, uh, this thing that internet has connected us to all over the world. At the moment, yes. you are sitting with the almost 150 participants who are around who are looking at you from around the world. But after one hour, uh, you will be at another place and these all people will be at another place or there will be another connectivity. So uh, internet has connected us, but might it is not uh, for uh, more uh, reliability. It has not much reliability. I'm just asking this. So there You're can right. be something there will be something uh, in the future which can bring reliability to such things. Yes. Reliability and sustainability of activities are the ones that can uh, bring prosperity to any uh, human uh, setup. But uh, we not be used as an opportunity to uh, you know uh, compete, compete with the uh, the. Da, uh, da la cream, the cream de la cream uh, uh, kind of a society, uh, which we now think uh, it is the West. It's also having a lot of, you uh, know, kind of uh, support only from people uh, from the Asian countries, from the East countries. So, uh, you know, things are all changing. Things are all changing. And the technology, once it is percolating down across all the global uh, frontiers, then it is easy for it to uh, be shared across various uh, populations, bring prosperity or uh, uh, better uh, cultural understanding or better uh, linguistic understanding between various segments of people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your brief answer. And I request from other participants if anyone has any question. So we are waiting for your questions. Otherwise, we need to move towards our second agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Christian, for your uh, valuable time and uh, Thank your you. valuable insights. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marula, do you hear me? Are you with us? Yes. Yeah. So now we can move to our uh, second I think that we have the second uh, moderator, isn't it? Is that right? We have the second mod. Uh, we have the second moderator, or is that handled by uh, Mr. Wazir itself? Okay, I will handle if Dr. Sunil is not here, so we have to go. And we have to move towards our schedule. And, yeah. Uh, or or let me uh check first. Is there yeah, uh Mr. Sunil Kumar here already joined with us? Dr. Sunil Kumar, are you with us? Are you with us, Doctor? Mike, I think is not not yet. He's not yeah, he's not with us, and uh, we have to go to our first presentation. Which uh, will be presented by uh, Jimmy Sega on a PhD. Yeah, so we actually uh, have our second speaker is uh, Professor Dr. Hana, but um, she has a trouble right now to join with us because there are a uh, blackout there. So, yeah. If Dr. Rohana is with us, so you can. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I think she already joined with us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If she okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now. <laughs>
Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm come late because there is problem in here, but the light is off. Now I'm uh, move the place uh, now in the light is on. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. We, okay. Now we I welcome. would like to present. We welcome, and, okay. we welcome you again and. Uh, Okay. Our, uh, uh, may I start now? Yes, yes. Okay. The role of the technology for the effectiveness uh, communication and uh, education. Uh, this is my detail of uh, my uh, presentation. The role of communication for effectiveness, uh, communication and education, uh, it is about the communication, the technology makes the communication requires a more efficient and a more accessible uh, the effects. Uh, now we have uh, advances of the mass um, about the communication, a smartphone, a social media, email, video, and another uh, this tool of the communication. It is a made the cross globe of uh, uh, renewing and to instant and time communication. Uh, we get uh, some advantages for the uh, use of the communication tools. Uh, this uh, make the real time of the communication is have the reduce of geographical boundaries and allow the individuals to communicate and collaborate uh, uh, for eff uh, effectively. Okay, technology has uh, democratized access to information with this internet. Everyone can access the fast uh, amount of knowledge on the various subject, uh, online subject uh, in engine, online labor laboratories, and educational website uh, have made it easier for the individual to gather information uh, efficiently. This is the empowered student and research and uh, professional to stay uh, update uh, to make the uh, decision for uh, the traditional education system by like the education online learning platform and more of the communication tools. Um, for example, a learning provide uh, flexibility, companion uh, allowing uh, people to learn online. Uh, <coughs> the communication makes uh, more and more advantages uh, for the communication and education um, for us. Uh, technology uh, plays a uh, basic on uh, the transformative education, exchange, in communication, and effectiveness. Uh, access of information. Technology access we receive to quick access to fast amount uh, of the educational resource and information beyond uh, traditional uh, textbooks. Uh, technology foster the interactive and engine learning experience, multimedia presentation videos, stimulation, and educational games captured to the student uh, attention, making the learning the more enjoyable, uh, the effective learning. It is a main uh, issue for the uh, teacher to give uh, some material to the student, uh, make the process of teaching and learning uh, effectively. Uh, personalized learning technology allow the personal learning uh, to explore and power to the individual student needed at the learning styles. Educational software on online platform can adapt the student progress, providing progress to content of the exercise. Uh, for example, 
the student uh, can um, study uh, by individually at home. They can uh, searching in an internet about uh, some material and then uh, find it in some school and then they are kind of uh, learning by individual. It is, uh, they can uh, get some profit for it to increase their knowledge at home uh, in another place and everywhere. Uh, it is uh, the student uh, study by uh, internet by some and then it is very important to the student to increase uh, themself, themselves. Okay, improve the collaboration. Technology and enable the student to collaborate and communicate with the peers and teacher various way, uh, various ways. Um, for example, now we can collaborate uh, by online uh, conference. It is at the uh, profit or advantages for the we uh, use of the uh, technology tools. Some of positive uh, impact to uh, technology in education uh, equals uh, about the better accessible of the learning materials. Technology allow the student and teacher to access the learning material from different place uh, and at any time. Uh, now we meet in uh, online, and then we can uh, we can. Uh, hear about the how to uh, another to plan about the, the material for another for example this is the advantages for the how to make the uh, technology tools uh, give uh, some advantages for the other for us right? for example okay and then and then number two more the interactive and the fun learning technology enable more interactive fun interesting learning by using video animation games uh, etc and then more of the uh, some technology uh, tools we can use in the learning process and then, uh, uh, the, the, uh, learning about the improve the communication be between the teacher and the student uh, and the parents. Technology makes the communication between uh, of the teacher, student, and the parent easier via the mail, via the text messages, uh, via the uh, WhatsApp, uh, uh, via the some of the uh, technology tool uh, for special uh, application for example and then number four increase the efficiency that technology can also uh, speed of the teaching and the learning process uh, uh, efficiency and running uh, educational program and the more the more we can uh, get information by the technology tools and then, if we when if we want to uh, send the message, we can uh, use the technology uh, uh, like uh, WhatsApp, uh, like the email, and uh, some and another uh, tools. The sum of negative impact of technology uh, on the communication includes. Uh, uh, the reduction of the ability to interact directly and the uh, low the quality of interaction and uh, ineffective uh, communication. How to reduce the ability to interact uh, directly depend on the technology. Reach the resisting uh, a person ability to interact uh, directly with the other people. And then uh, how to quality of interaction. Online interaction are the less uh, important than the question and can 
misunderstanding by the recipient and which is can harm communication uh, in the long uh, run. And then, uh, dependence of the technology can buy the rest uh, or the life uh, balance of the uh, blurring the boundaries between the work and the personal life. Uh, there are several, several obstacles on the using technology in education. Number one, about the accessibility and then uh, cost. Uh, this is very expensive uh, for cost uh, of the technology tools. Uh, and then how to accessibility it is uh, a good and not good. Uh, sometimes we can uh, uh, challenge how to do but I just, I just, uh, I just uh, to get it about the uh, how to accessibility the challenge of me because I'm like to uh, be connect with the uh, in here because I have uh, uh, can uh, accessibility to connect it. And then number three, professional development and assistant of chain and uh, the number four, uh, number five, technical, technical difficulties and content quality relevance and quality as a scape and um, prevention as uh, security complex uh, and this uh, of the means. This is uh, the so education. Now we have uh, some obstacle, but now we have solution how to use the technology, the learning process in today about the one uh, to provide elevated the technological support. It is for important because the other to minimize the possibility the techni uh, technological problem upon the online learning platform. Okay, and then the solution number two. Uh, we provide the guys and tutorial of uh, using the technology uh, that are clear and uh, easy to understand to the user. And the number three is uh, to educate the internet and classroom and speed. Uh, it, if it uh, is difficult to access, can be able to add uh, to that insert. Number four. Facing the technology is tool only that knows technology suitable for interaction uh, between the student, meaning that uh, so to be participant and the uh, teacher. And the number five, for we'll the training on the use of the interrogate uh, technology, uh, radio calling for the teacher who teach all the student. And the number six, optimize the teacher and the student interaction uh, through the technology, such as um, virtual discussion, online assessment, on uh, like now webinar, on uh, international conference, and so on and so on. More and more solution how to open because of the uh, using the technology in the learning uh, process, okay? Now we move, uh, how about the using technology in teaching and learning process over the several uh, advantages that can increase the effectiveness of the communication. Uh, the number one, increase the engagement. Uh, 
and then the number two about the technology provide the student uh, which is to access the world of information uh, and so uh, they might be not be available in traditional classroom setting and the uh, technology enable the student uh, collaborating with the communication with the peers uh, and the teacher of various ways for testing effective communication and, and uh, uh, teamwork skill. Okay, the use of technology on communication learning benefit for the teacher and the student. Uh, it is about the expanding access access uh, access uh, of uh, to information student can improve communication and technology skill that uh, important that the life and then increase the I think Dr. Rohani has some technical issues. Okay, the problem of the channel. Yes, Dr. Rohani. Okay. Uh, the signal. digital skill of the signal okay uh, mother we can't listen to you Dr. Mahana. maybe you have some audio problem We cannot hear you, Dr. Rehana. There is some connection problem. Hello. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hanna, for your uh, wonderful presentation. Nurla, if uh, you are with me, so uh, I have received uh, information from Dr. Ruhana that she still has uh, uh, some problem in connectivity. So we can move forward uh, for the presentations. Are you listening? Nurla? Can we yeah. move? Can we move towards uh, Yeah. I think uh, let's reopen next session is a uh, question and answer session. Um, please, uh, Mr. Wazir uh, can handle it, right? Okay.
uh, you know, Dr. Rohana is not with us, so we have to go for the presentation. When she will arrive, then we can do the question and answer session. We only have two speakers. We, we have, yeah, we have to go towards our first presentation. The, the speakers we have from with the presentation from different countries, we have to go with that. I mean, I think that we need to open the question and answer session for uh, Mr. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Ibu Rohana materials first. Then mm -hmm. we can hand. Uh, we can move to the next uh, session for the panel, right? But Ibu Rohana has not internet connection at the moment. She uh, me She already joined with us. Yeah. yeah. There is Ibu Rohana and. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ibu, uh, Ibu Rohana, can you hear us? Uh, we, uh, the signal. Yeah, so can we uh, have a question and answer session for your materials, Ibu? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Now open uh, uh, the session about the, the next session. The next session. Yeah. Uh, uh, I will give the time for Mr. Wazir to handle that. Time is yours, Mr. Wazir. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I will call upon uh, Jamie Sagia Bona, PhD, for presenting uh, paper, use of newspaper as instructional materials in the teaching and learning process, in the case of secondary school in Delta State. If uh, you are with us, Jamie Sagia Bona. Are you with us? Um, uh, open the next session. Uh, now, please open the next session. This is not a problem. Uh, but now, in here, uh, this is the problem with the uh, signal. Uh, and then, I don't hear something. Uh, but I can uh, speak now, but I don't hear uh, more. Okay. We, we are uh, going to present the first uh, Presentation from uh, Janice Segia, Sega, maybe for PhD. Uh, he has to, he or she has to present her paper, use of newspaper as instructional materials in the teaching and learning process, a case of secondary schools in Delta State. Are you with us, Jamie Segia? Are you listening? And after that, we have Arjuna Daftar to present her paper, Impact of <laughs> Social Media Marketing, Elements on Consumer Experience and Brand Credibility, <laughs> uh, Study of Fashion Industry in Pakistan. <laughs> if anyone of uh, these two has, so they can tell us. Then we have Ahmad Thomas Sayyid Kogati from Asit University, Strategy in Primary Education. Are you with us, Ahmad? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. If you can present your paper, so you can start. Yeah, yeah can I have it? Uh, but can, I can't uh, screen, uh, share screen right now. You can't screen, you can't share yeah. screen? Yeah. So if if you are visible, so you can come to the video and you can start with the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Here I am. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. So you can start with the presentation. Yeah. The paper today is about enhancing literacy, a journey through common and inspired teaching strategy in primary education. The current era is witnessing rapid scientific and technological development in life and it is various fields of knowledge, technology and politicals, economics and culture, which made this development and the change essential features of this era. Education is required 
to search for a new educational method and models to meet many challenges right now. As individuals differ in learning according to their abilities and the speed to keep peace of each individual. This is what self-learning offers. Reading is of a great importance in stimulating the mind constantly. It also reduces the occurrence of various mental diseases and keeps the brain active and increases information. And thus, the student become more able to face life and difficulties it encounters and uh, determine whether they were written and described it in a good way or not. Reading helps in self-decision and take better actions regarding his life and features. Discover new things he did not know about motivation. It is defined as a stage of internal arousal that motivates that learning to exhibit his maximum energy to reach the goal or goal in the educational situation. Learning motivation is the desire that drives person to succeed and achieve a certain educational level or gain social acceptance from partners and teachers, which motivates the learner and pushes him to achieve the greater extent performance. It is uh, possible, therefore, motivation is one of the most important factors that stimulate learning and desires academic achievement. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you. On the other hand, modern education and literature emphasizes the need to use reading skills strategy that take into account students' needs and interests, and especially in the primary stage, which is considered as an important stage in terms of establishing the student and teaching those important skills such as reading and enhancing their learning motivation. Uh, then we go background and rational. rational. The rational behind this research is multifold, stemming from the possible need to address contemporary challenges in primary education. Enhancing reading proficiency, the ability to read proficiency is not essential for academic success, but also for active participation in the modern life. Information-driven world. By integrating common principles into the curriculum, this research seeks to understand how enhancing reading instruction can positively impact the students' abilities to comprehend analysis and interrupt various forms of text. Global education innovation. As the world becomes more inter interconnected, the exchange, exchange of innovating educational practices becomes imperative. By study, uh, studying the impact of common principles outside of Japan, this research contributes to the global conversation of uh, effective teaching strategies, understanding how these principles can be adapted to diverse cultural contexts provides valuable insights for education and policy makers worldwide. Ahmed, you can speak. Hello. Ahmed, are you with us? Maybe Ahmed has lost the connection. So we have to wait again for him. Yeah, due to bad connection, Ahmed again has lost his connection. So we have to wait for him again as we get connected. So uh, let's we wait until five minutes, right? So he can prepare to come we back. Have to we have to wait for him. Maybe he get connected again. And we yeah. Have to wait. Yeah. We have to wait. Sorry, this happens. It is natural. Sorry.
Ahmed, are you with us? Mr. Ahmed? Can you hear me? I'm sorry for yes. my connection. Yeah, you are really understanding. You can continue. You can continue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number four, informing indication. The finding of this research holds the potential to inform educational policies at local and national and international levels. Evidence-based insights into the effectiveness of common and inspired teaching strategies can guide the development of curricula and instructional methods, ensuring that educational policies are grounded in research-driving practices. Uh, then we go statement of the problem. Uh, the problem at hand can be detected into spe specific components. One, reading proficiency gap. A significant number of primary school students faces difficulties in mastering essential reading skills. Hand, re hand hearing their ability to compare hand complex text, extract meaningful information and uh, critically analyzes diverse content. This proficiency gap not only affects their academic performance, but also impacted their overall intellectual growth. Limited application of innovation teaching strategies. While innovative teaching methods such as those inspired by the Japanese program common have shown promise in addressing reading challenges and motivation issues, there is a dease of comprehensive research exploring their uh, applicability. Outside their uh, cultural context, the lack of in-depth studies examining the effectiveness of common inspired strategies in diverse primary school setting hampers the development of evidence-based practices. Global relevance and adaptability. In an increasingly globalized world, it is crucial to determine to the adaptability and the relevance of innovative teaching strategies like common across diverse cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds, understanding how these methods can be tolerated to meet the unique needs to different student population is essential for creating inclusive educational practices. The object of the study to assess the impact of common inspired teaching strategies. Uh, the primary objects of this, this study is uh, evaluated the effectiveness of teaching strategies inspired by the Japanese program common in enhancing reading proficiency uh, among primary school students by conducting pre and post intervention assessments that study aims to qualify quantity, the improvement, improvement in student reading skills resulting from the implementation of common based methods do identify uh, adaptation for diverse cultural context. One of the key objectives is to identify how common and inspired teaching strategies can be adapted to diverse cultural context and varying educational setting. By focusing on uh, characteristic, by limited resources and disparities in educational access. This research intends to analyze how these methods can, as a, can play a, a big role as a tool for promoting educational quality. Sorry for inconvenience. Maybe I'm not again have lost this connection. Uh, who is the next speaker after Ahmed? So we must announce uh, their name. They must be ready for their uh, presentation. Maybe when Ahmed will finish. So who is the next speaker? Uh, let's we move to the our first uh, pick. Uh, sorry, uh, presenters is Jamie Sega Guana. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Ahmed Kamis is the third uh, presenter. So, we need to move the, in the first presenter first. Is Jami Sega Guana, PhD? Yeah, if he is available, so he can raise his hand. 
Mr. Jami, are you with us? I think that we need to check first uh, the all the percentages first, then Let's we decide who is the next um presenters. Yes. Is that okay, we, Mr. Wazir? Yes, so you can okay. ask all three names. Otherwise, we have the fourth speaker. Okay. Um, Salita Kachava. Maybe I'm pronouncing her name right. So if yes. uh, they, uh, if there is no one, so we have other speaker in the line, so she can present her paper and she is visible. Uh, us. So if uh, Mr. Ahmed has still the problem, so we can move towards the speaker Kachava to present her paper. Yes, I am here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Kamar Joba. And Salamat. Yes, and Salamat Pagi. Um, Good afternoon from Indonesia. Uh, I am Salome Kuchawa. I am from Georgia. I am happy because I joined you, your project. And uh, I hope that this day uh, will be nice for our presentation and all participants. Okay. Now I can talk about our presentation and share my uh, Desktop. Uh, can you see my share desktop? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, you can continue. Okay. Yeah, we can see. Sure, we can see. Okay. Uh, my presentation term today is the impact of technological advertisements on people's lives. Uh, I am uh, Georgian and uh, Akakitele State University. Uh, the 21st is the age uh, of information and technological advances. We can clearly observe how human talked and level of development have changed, causing us to build the tools we need for comfort. Our uh, predecessors did not have advanced technological capabilities many decades ago. Who would have imagined that we would have smartphones, laptops, uh, tablets, spacecraft, and robotics in today's world? Globally, the importance of current technologies is enormous, and demand for them is growing at uh, an ever increasing rate. When technological advancement serves the greater goods and does not endanger uh, the environment, it is always a good thing. The global trends in education demonstrate how crucial it is to increase the use of information technology in the classroom for the success 
of the educational process. The most significant place in our daily life has long been taken by technologies. Uh, many people think that technological advancements have great, uh, greatly aided human progress, but others are persuaded that there are many more negative effects than uh, positive ones. Reason of research. The purpose of research is to demonstrate that modern technology simplify pro processes and help organizations promote and become more competitive in uh, ascension. An important part of the research is the uh, assessment of the modern technologies in the field of culture in Georgia. In this case, the purpose of the research is to review uh, what kind of innovative, uh, innovative technologies the museums and theaters in Georgian poses? Three the technologies. Uh, three dim uh, dimensional image, the same as 3D, is a te uh, technique that means that uh, uh, the image has white, height, and depth. Our physical environment. Environment is three dimensional, and every day we have to exist uh, in space in three day. But our imagination imagination is not three D. Today, three D imaging is used in various direction. For example, in television, computer games, in the film industry, architecture, and various fields of science. Also, we have three D printer. And uh, through the printer is a device that can create an object based on its through the model. Through the painting is a process of direct digital production of through the data. Also, way we way way and way idea become material and tangible and with the highest accuracy and physically best visualization. Uh, we live in uh, uh, um, we live in the information age, and as all social studies show, this means for museums that visitors need more and more information. In my opinion, technological development is good because it eases and simplifies our living conditions every day. But excessive uh, uh, development leads to death. Humans will destroy themselves with their own hands. In recent time, the questions of the production of robots and their placement in the labor market is relevant. This uh, it seems cool when a robot service you you uh, and bring you what you want. You don't have the uh, to get tried. Let's look at the result of the mass use of robots in the business market for another angle. Uh, the level of work will decrease, unemployment will increase, and people will begin to starve and fall into stress because they will think that an iron robot is doing their job. Uh, it's uh, probably funny to understand this, uh, but I think we are getting closer to the time when technology will replace humans. Uh, furthermore, it is evident uh, excessive computer use process health risk. Uh, computer screen, uh, solar radiation, uh, which harms human uh, eyesight is one illustration uh, according to a study, signs the invitation mm -hmm. of computer technology. Uh, the number of people who use glasses has uh, substantially increased. Uh, Tamar Kalandadze is a doctor in Georgia of philosophy uh, of the Faculty of Educational of the University of also guest lecture of the University. 
uh, a researcher at the Norwegian State Research Center examines the effect of technology use on children. Does the children interaction with a computer uh, 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 does a ch uh, child's uh, interactions with a computer as a pro uh, per school age cause any type of delay? Uh, and mental development as a first influence of interaction with the computer on the child's mental development. I'm afraid that here too we are often dealing with a mistake when the uh, correlation established by research between two factors is called a cause and effect relationship. There is a no reliable advance of link between mental health problems and modern technology. Uh, on the other hand, there are less reliable studies that, for example, uh, point uh, to frequent television viewing at uh, an early age as a cause of problems with the development of attention. However, these studies do not uh, consider potential contribution uh, contributing uh, factors. For example, we don't know why the child prefers to spend a lot of time in front of the TV because the TV attracts him uh, and uh, he does not want to leave the house or he does not want to go out all, at all. Let's say he is dis depressed, uh, depressed, or feel bad with uh, his peers, is a victim of bullying and etc. cetera. Uh, uh, the dynamics of technological change are quite fast and mobile by modern global standards. Organizations from any region of the world are trying to be uh, adaptable and changeable as possible. They were oriented both uh, by changing the organizational culture and by introducing resource optimization programs. Accordingly, the dynamics of technological change allow business representatives to develop and actually use the most uh, automated uh, and com computerized production processes. If we take a look at uh, the dynamics of technology development, we can easily notice the radi uh, radical change that we, uh, that we got as a result of its use. First of all, the activation of social networks and internet uh, involvement in business production is noteworthy, which facilitates the process of increasing the coverage area and the number of users. Adoption of technologies based on essence and importance of organizational culture in organization itself leads to the introduction on of new departments and new theories. Uh, uh, this was my presentation today. I think uh, uh, it was it was good for our participants. And uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for your participation. You have presented a very wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, now we will open the forum for the questions. And uh, there is who has a question for you. Absalom, we can ask you a question. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I have a question. What will be the new trends in next five years regarding the uh, use of technology for uh, for uh, educational purposes in, in people's lives? Um. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the uh, technological advertisements has uh, in, a big influence in education, of course, because uh, all people, all teacher and all mm, person uh, uh, use uh, in educational process technologic because it helps us for focus uh, our um, uh, our mm, uh, processing 
uh, in education in education and uh, all people helps to contact uh, uh, each other and uh, also it is uh, simply simply for education um, i think uh, yes i think this answer thank, thank you. you thank you very much here is a question from Franz Singer. So you can ask your question. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I have two questions uh, for Ms. Ohana and Ms. Uh, Salome Kutapa. Uh, okay. My question to, to Professor Ohana, how do you think about the advance of technology Make students cannot use the typical analytical thinking? For example, they use ChatGPT to get answer their schoolwork. And what solution for the, the recent issue? And the second one to Ms. Salome, what do you think about the five to seven years old adapting new technology? And uh, do you think that means uh, result is that impact because they don't get enjoyment in education? Because uh, in early uh, childhood, uh, they must have uh, happiness. They, they must have enjoy uh, in education. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's all. So later, if you have heard the question, so please uh, answer to the question. Mm, okay. Uh, the 21st century today and uh, there is um age of information uh, advances and technological advances. Uh, many decades ago, we don't, we did not have uh, technology, and uh, therefore, uh, our, all peoples did not have uh, access uh, to um, access to uh, technology, and uh, they had uh, a small, uh, they had small um, access uh, um, uh, in other technology, and uh, I think uh, this technology we help. Uh, we help to find new. Um, we have uh, we uh, help find new information, uh, new uh, new uh, new information, and we can. Uh, it, it is uh, important too for our uh, for our uh, life for our life, and also help us to find uh, um, uh, other people all, all around the world. And um, it is important to, uh, it is important to uh, tools in education because um, many students are happy and uh, are happy and uh, they want to um, uh, hear new uh, new news and uh, uh, take uh, in, uh, about uh, regarding uh, new information and uh, uh, meet new friends and also uh, connected uh, all, all peoples. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful answer. If anyone else has any question for uh, Salita and uh, Francis, uh, if anyone else wanted to a question, but still Francis has a question, please ask your question, sir. Salita, I have a question for you. What inspired you to do a research on such relevant topic, the technology and education? What was the basic uh, reason or the motivation behind doing this research? Can you share your experience and ideas? What motivated you to do this research? Okay. okay. And now I'm working in in the school in Georgia, and um, uh, we all day, uh, we uh, all day all day we have research um, 
in our classroom uh, in my children. Uh, that's um, uh, that's uh, we have a happy day all day. We have we all we have whole day happy because uh, because um, our uh, our um lesson is uh, good for us uh, for us and for children because we use um technology um for uh, for uh, education uh, sometimes uh, i i use um, uh, television sometimes i use a monitor and uh, sometimes i use computer for lesson and uh, my children is happy because um, they uh, because um, they want to study uh, e they want to study new technology and um, also uh, we uh, also, I sometimes I uh, research that uh, um, my with my children that uh, we go uh, we sometimes go technological other technological university and we take uh, we take uh, information about uh, these issues and after we uh, we are uh, we are. Uh, doing um, uh, small information after the after the um, uh, sizing after the sizing and uh, uh, we write also uh, decisions and uh, other information technology uh, in uh, our school. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful answer. And still we are waiting if anyone wants to ask any question from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, there is a question from, I think, Lula. She wanted to ask you something. Do you have any question, Lula? Lula? Uh, no, I uh, don't have any questions and no, thank you so no, no. there is there is a moderator maybe she's she has a question for you ah. yeah a second moderator may i have uh, may i give you questions yes yes, yes. <laughs> okay uh actually i really um interest with your topic because as maybe you already know these issues that in uh, New Zealand, I think, in New Zealand, um, elementary schools that there is um, trying to come back uh, for to the modern style of the education. They they uh, changing the um, method from the using technology to uh, the modern um, modern model of education. So when uh, so when people uh, when the elementary schools nowadays using a tablet or ipad for reading now in the new zealand they're changing it with the um you know the conservative books that have a paper and i can we touch it and you know like we can use our all of our um uh how to say it? oh i'm sorry i forgot that yeah so i mean uh we uh, as we know that the technology is um, improved nowadays, but the uh, education on the New Zealand that we already know that um, maybe in high level, you know, but they changing it in a traditional way. So what do you think about that? What is your opinion about that? This is like that. Okay, uh, it's a uh, uh, really good question. Um... Yes, of course. Um, uh, no, no, uh, education, uh, technological advance help uh, our children to success in your life and change their brain and uh, also help um, they are happy and my students are excited to use this technology they prefer technology than uh, the book because 
uh, than the books, uh, and they don't want to write in purple. Uh, but uh, but um, uh, I think that uh, it's important also book, also uh, technology. We have collaboration to each other uh, for uh, success uh, education. Um, and uh, I think also uh, that uh, ed technological advances uh, help uh, all people to communicate each other and communicate for uh, for students and meeting to, together uh, to meeting each other and uh, also it is um, uh, uh, also provide. Uh, provide to uh, provide to receive high level uh high level and development change and causing and build the tools we need for comfort um, uh, for example uh, technologies uh, technologies um, uh, such as smartphones laptops and tablets help us to uh, for education and uh, also it is uh, good tools um, and uh, the global trends in education demonstrate how crucial it is to increase to use of information technology in the classroom for the success of the educational process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if there is anyone who has any question for Salita, so we still wait. Otherwise, we have to move towards our other speakers. We have uh, Ibu, Ibu Megawati. I think that she raised her hand. Oh, yeah. If there is anyone who has questions. Okay, question. thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this thank chance. Uh, I want to ask for Salita Kuchapa. Hi, how are you? Hi. Fine, okay. Hi. Uh, thank you for this chance, can, and, and I am very happy I can speak with uh, the other countries. Now, my question for you, uh, as we know that technological advances uh, have had a significant impact on social life in many countries. Uh, for example, uh, Indonesia especially, and any, any other countries yeah, in, in the world. And then um, one of the most uh, significant impacts uh, of technological advances uh, in uh, many countries uh, is uh, the, the emergencies of social media. Now, what do you think about um, the uh, technological advances uh, for many countries uh, in their life yeah, for each country, I mean that. Okay, thank you for questions. And um, technological advances uh, is important uh, for uh, us because today we connect it, we connect it because I am from Georgia and you're from Indonesia. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we connected each other, and it is uh, in, uh, it is first uh, it is first uh, significant uh, uh, block uh, that uh, we connect together, and also your questions is uh, uh, technological advance advances is important uh, social media. It is, yes, it is true because uh, uh, all journalists and all people to find in uh, Google and Wikipedia and all television to find new information. It's help us for, um, uh, it help us for new news and reports for reports. Uh, therefore, 
um, I'm working in school and for other organization. I need to find uh, about uh, news regarding uh, other issues. And uh, it is important for me, I think, and also important for our people of the world. Yes. Um, uh, I think I, I, I need to find uh, information about what happened in Indonesia, what's happened for other countries. Uh, I find this conference uh, in Instagram, 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 and after connect it and join you. Yes, it is, uh, it is um, more significant. Yes, um, it is first, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, first uh, work for success for me. Yes, of course. And uh, I think uh, technological advance is uh, significant for our life. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. For Salita Thank you for Thank you, Professor Megawati, for your question, and thank you, Salita, for your answer. You're and uh, we we are very grateful to Salita for such a wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you, thank you so much. And now I will ask Yubila uh, to please continue for further presentation. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Wazir, we have our next presenter, uh, Professor Abdul Hadis. I think we have to, yes. yeah. Uh, is Professor Abdul Hadis with us? Uh, uh, okay, if he's not with us, then I think that I will give uh, the floor to Mr. Wazir to present um, his paper. Is that okay, Mr. Wazir? Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I think that I will handle for you to moderate it, yeah. right? Okay. Okay. I will, I will be the presenter and you have to be the moderator. All right. So, okay. Thank you. Um, just, just wait a minute. I, yeah, I, I think, yeah, so because um, our presenter is kind of like maybe uh, have uh, some issues or trouble at there. So uh, let's we uh, move to the next presenters. We have uh, Dr. Oh, sorry, uh, we have uh, Wazir Ali to present his presentations. Are you ready, Mr. Wazir? Yes, I am ready. I okay, now, all right, um, time is yours. Thank you. If uh, my presentation is visible to everybody, so I can start. Okay. We start with the name of Allah, who is most merciful and beneficial. And uh, I'm very grateful to Dr. Professor Ruhana for providing uh, such a platform for many of the students like us from all around the world that we are participating in this wonderful international online conference. So I'm very grateful that uh, we have been given a chance and opportunity to share our knowledge and learn from others. It is a really great opportunity. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Professor Ruhan. And thank you, Lula, for conducting such a wonderful conference. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, everyone, for your participation. Uh, today, I'm going to present my paper that Unrevealing Political Elites Catalysts for change agents of status quo in socioeconomic development and its implications in educational institutions in Pakistan. I am doing PhD at Sabli Smart University in Indonesia. So the, basically, the paper is going to tell us that how political elite of one area has captured everything, how they have 
taken away the all of the powers and how does that affect social economic development and especially when we talk about education so what is the effect of uh, that power on education so first <clears throat> we have to move towards the introduction as we can understand that without education no one can progress none of the countries can make any progress if today europe is far away or they are on the top if europe and americans are on the top if china is making progress if other countries are making so much progress it means they have invested so much on education they emphasize on the education and education has brought them very best uh, so many developing countries people from so many developing countries wanted to move to canada usa uk and other countries because they have the better education system and education system empowers society it provides us the skills and it makes us able to ask the questions and politics is something which is relevant and related to every matter of the state so politicians or someone who determine the policies they have the courage and they have the ability and they have the power to make any policy if any policy has been in any country if, uh, if if we talk about curriculum if we talk about uh, the educational reforms if we have discussing the role of technology in education all this will be done by through the political process because when they will make a policy then a teacher will be aware that what he has to do so according to that pakistan has also education policy and according to that uh, there is a it is written in the constitution of pakistan according to the constitution from age 5 to 16 years uh, child it is compulsory for the government of pakistan to provide education it means government has to provide him schooling he has to make sure that he goes to school and they have to provide him schooling system other than this political interference interference is not just something which has happened in just last one year two year or three years it has been happening in last 75 years when pakistan became independent from that time we have been facing these problems that up up to every fifth or sixth year or tenth year there is a reform in curriculum and everything has been changed and after that a new policies are implemented so and when new policies are implemented previous policies are null and void and then something new happens it is very difficult for the teachers and for the educators to act upon those policies which is uh, rather uh, taking attention towards its decline not to uh, what's uh, betterment of the education so if we talk about the problem statement uh, only the schooling system we are not talking about higher education we just talk about the schooling system so the schooling system is very poorly managed in pakistan very neglected no minister or none of the politician has any of uh, interest to make the system effective if we talk about physical infrastructure of the buildings very poor very bad and still teachers are teaching under the trees in 21st century where we are talking about before me salita and other presenters has presented presented talked about the use of technology in the schooling system but still our teacher has no room to teach he has to teach his his or her children 
under a tree or uh, sometimes we have heavy floods in Pakistan. So teachers has to manage a one room from their home to teach those kids because those children belong to us. If government is not doing something, it doesn't matter. But teachers are keen to do those things. So even in in schools, when there is no boundary wall, so you can imagine there will be drinking water for students, there will be any toilet. If a girl uh, of age between 5 to 16 goes to school and she has no toilet over there, what will be her condition? You are a woman, you can imagine what sort of condition and what sort of treatment she has at school. So will she able to go to school? And so many schools are shelterless. Sometimes buildings are very old that they get collapsed. So incidents happen like this. But it's just not a huge province of Pakistan, 44% of whole Pakistan. And it is mostly neglected by its own political elite, political leaders. Political leader means those the politicians take the vote from the people when they go to the higher position, they forget that how do they come here. They only think about their interest. They don't have any interest about the masses. And education is the basic foundation of any nation. If there isn't any education in any, in any country, that country cannot progress at all, at all. So these are the basic problems. So only political elite is responsible. Political elite has made a connection with bureaucracy and uh, there are some teachers who also do not like to go to school. So teacher absenteeism is also a huge problem, but they are supported by those political leaders. When you have that much support, it means you are going to destroy the education system. So this is a huge educational problem in Pakistan, especially in the context of the school system. There is a huge research gap. No such study has been conducted in this country about the role of political elite and its effect on education system. So this study has contributed a lot to research and for the policy makers. So this way, maybe someday these policies must be implemented to make sure that education system must prevail and people get education. So the basic research question of this study was to identify political elites engagement in the education sector with the political reforms. The basic things, the basic thing which political elite has to do is the political reforms. They have to make positive changes. Alongside that, to understand the political intervention's implication that if they are doing such things, so how do they destroy the education system? So we have to understand and do and to explore political elites, spectrum the age vote. There is a huge connection between a voter and a politician. That voter can be a teacher, that voter can be a worker at any office. So they have a nexus, they have a connection, which really disturbs education. So the basic research question of this study is that political steel. The political elite is really engaged with the education sector for better, or they just wanted to take their share from education sector because education sector has a huge budget in Pakistan. What are the implications of political interventions in education sector? I think it is a positive or negative, and how political patronage is what is political patronage doing in education sector either. It is going to be positive or negative. So the critical framework of this study has been built on the uh, rent-seeking theory. Rent-seeking means that you do not have to invest anything, 
but you earn and you make profit from existing money. It means education sector has nothing strength fruitful, but whatever invested in education sector, you take your part from there, the share, the value, the strength, the power, which political elite tries to grab and which affects education. So rent seeking theory was introduced by Gordon in 1967, and it is the practice of squaring social value, power, and we can say that when politicians and teachers and teacher associations have a nexus with each other, so they try to misuse the resources and everyone makes their share. So rent seeking theory has helped us to fit this study. And there is a, and this can't be without being corruption. So it is an institutional corruption with the help of rent seeking theory. And corruption is a huge barrier towards progress. And political elite always tries to take resources of local people. If we talk about research methodology, qualitative research was used in this study and purpose sampling was <clears throat> done for this study. And in this study, uh, we interviewed civil society, journalists, political workers, political agents, political parties, and <clears throat> the higher education, higher level of education, management, especially policy makers, and the teachers themselves, because they are the key, key component of uh, this study. And with more than 50 interviews were conducted with different people to know their perception. And qualitative data is heavily uh, dependent on uh, perceptions and understanding what we understand and the whole study was done uh, in narrative perception. So if I conclude my study, so the conclusion of this study has found that this region, region has been marginalized socially, politically, and economically for the last 75 years by their political elite because they have captured everything. And there is a tribal, strong tribal system. It is very vast feudal system for thousands, for hundreds of years, because this system was introduced by the British colonialists in when they arrived in 17th century. When they arrived, they wanted to have the power, so they tried to make Nawabs, Sardars, and they gave them these uh, names. They were mainly powerful, but the, the whole power was uh, in the hands of British. But when they came, they introduced the system, and they have gone back. But after, still, after 75 years, we are still facing them. They have the power, and they have the alliance with uh, non-state actors. And if you go against them, so you can't feel safe for them. So this is the huge problem. So political elite is not has just the power of uh, politics, but some other powers as well. So political intervention introduced favoritism, nepotism, and which and corruption, which ultimately lagged behind Pakistan in education, Pakistan in India got independence just on a single day. If we imagine India and we compare Pakistan with it. So India is uh, far, far ahead from us, and it will uh, may we take more 200 years to do a competition, but there isn't any competition between uh, Pakistan and India. It, even Bangladesh became independent after uh, 1971. Still, they are better than us in education because there isn't any political intervention. So, political authorities at national level in Pakistan failed to adopt any such reforms or they didn't build or make any policy 
which can promote learning focus education in Pakistan. So that's why we suffer a lot. If policies are not good, so results will be not very well. And at every district level, there is an individual politician who has patronage uh, support. And throughout district, uh, he has the whole, he has the control over all, every officer uh, in a district. Either it is about education, health, everything, it is related and relevant to them. No one can go against them. So even if they are, uh, if new schools are established in any area, so the location will be selected uh, on the political interests because uh, either he is my voter or not. Uh, if if the schools are uh, built on uh, such circumstances, so you can imagine what will be uh, the role of uh, education in Pakistan. Feudal politics, corrupt bureaucracy, authoritarian regime, and fragile level civil society, weak democracy, and political uncertainty in Pakistan are the key components which uh, make us Pakistan suffer in the field of education. And uh, day by day, we suffer more. So this was all about my presentation. And uh, I will ask Lula to open the forum for the questions. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you so much for Mr. Wazir. So let's be open for a question and answer. Is um for all the participants have a question, please raise your hand. Now we have uh uh sorry, uh Mr. Who is this who raised the hand? So I have a question from your third slide, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you you have discussed that uh, after like some years, like when a new government developed, uh, there are reforms, like uh, reforms in the education system. So uh, I think so reforms are better, like better for the educational system. Rather, they are not like uh, as as uh, like you suggested that these are not better like better for the uh, primary education so is this uh, contradictory this this presentation was about primary education this was about school education it means from primary to higher secondary every schooling system it is not about just and uh, says that policy was about single curriculum that wasn't about uh, the schooling policy it was made uh, it was just about a single curriculum, that one curriculum will be followed in the schools. It wasn't something that the schools will be rebuilt, teachers will be given or provided uh, fully transparent training. It is about the thing. If you have visited any public school in Pakistan and if you compare with it to a private school, so you will see there is huge difference between the schooling system, the teaching system, the teaching practices. I'm talking about that. Single curriculum cannot overcome these issues. These issues can be resolved when your political elite is very committed with the education system. This will happen when it can be possible when they will invest in the education. If there is a private school that is earning from you, that's why they do something which is really good for the education. This is about uh, the policies. This is not about something primary education or uh, secondary education. Okay, so uh, it basically focuses on public sector schools, right? Yeah, public. It is. It is all about public sector education system where so, we don't uh, have so... the proper proper policies to be implemented. And uh, you can understand one MPA or one MNA in Pakistan, how much power he has. If he is an education minister, so what he does, 
or what he did for the betterment of education. If you can uh, suggest that yeah, they have done anything. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you for your question. Thank you. So, um, for the our second question is Francine Naga. Yeah, time is yours. Yeah, assalamu alaikum, uh, Mr. Wazir Ali. Wa alaikum assalam. I have two questions uh, for you. Uh, my first question is, uh, how many percentage of education posts in national Pakistan budget implemented? And is there any changing curriculum based on the global issue or domestic demand issue? And my second question is, you say that the Pakistan education related to, to the political intervention. And are there any political... I mean, and are there any Pakistan politicians thoughts about how Pakistan education must see the PISA scores in their policy when they are in the, I mean, when they are in the position as a high official, a government official? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful question. Uh, Pakistan is a country who only spends 3% of its GDP in education. You can see that how much interest Pakistan government has for the education. But if you are only spending 2% or 3% of its GDP on education, it is very less. It means you are not committed with the education. So if it is the budget of education, so how you can make sure that government is very serious with the education sector? And the reforms, I already mentioned that, that are after every second year or third year, new reforms are uh, done in the education. But those reforms are still not implemented when new reforms are made. So how a teacher and a teacher who has been appointed for teaching, he didn't receive any te teaching practice uh, training for five years or 10 years. Do you think that a teacher who has been appointed and he has no teaching in his entire career for 20 years, so how he can be able to teach uh, in such technological era where we have to use uh, chat GPT, AI, other technological tools, and that teacher is still teaching his class under the shadow of the teacher where he don't have a proper room for teaching. Can you imagine when there is a girl of eight or nine years old, she's going to school, but there isn't any toilet for her. So how will she survive? This is this is the real scenario. We have to understand this thing before going towards uh, the basic uh, curriculum reforms or we talk about AI use or other things. First, we have to answer these questions. If there is a single teacher in the school and uh, unfortunately he has an accident by, on the road or he, was, he has to attend uh, a doctor for his family, so who will be at school? These are the key questions which our political elite and the policy makers has to answer. These are the basic questions which I raised during my research. So I hope that I made you understand the things that um, you really wanted to ask me. Thank you. Yeah. If there is any other question. Yeah, uh, how about this are friends in again? Is, is that clear? Does that answer your question? Oh. Uh, well, uh, I, I thought uh, it's okay. Uh, it's already uh, answered. Um, uh, I mean, uh, about the PISA score, what do you think about uh, Pakistan's uh, policy, education's policy for the PISA score? Can you uh, try to explore more information about uh, Pakistan's education's uh, view on the, on the PISA scores? I could not understand what you would like to ask me. If you make more understandable your question to me. 
well, I, he means that uh, what is the policies of education in the Pakistan, which is uh, already held nowadays, and maybe you think that is not really good in education field that way. I, that, that is the thing I am already explaining that education policies uh, are made. There is a huge budget, but that budget has been not utilized for schools. That budget is not spent on teachers. That budget is not utilized or used for the betterment of the schooling system. That budget has been uh, used for own sake. Those ministers, those political elites, they capture their, those resources. When there isn't a classroom, so how a teacher will be able to teach? If there isn't a good environment for teaching, how a teacher will teach if a teacher has to teach under uh, if a teacher has no school no school to teach there isn't any building of school so how he will be a better teacher if a teacher has been not provided any training for four years five years so we understand that he can be a good teacher how he can be a good teacher without uh, being uh, provided the trainings now you and I are sitting in front of the computer or a laptop. We are connected to the internet and we can be connected to the millions of people. But the teacher who has finished his high school 20 years ago and still he didn't get any sort of training for the betterment of his teaching. So can he be able to teach similarly, similar way, similar way like we are doing? or the professors are teaching us at universities by using YouTube and other tools to benefit from their knowledge. This is the basic research question of this study. That budget has been allocated, but that budget is going to someone's other pocket, not being utilized, used for the purpose of education. So, and after every second year, third year, if you make reforms, you change curriculum, so will it affect positively or negatively? Definitely it will be a negative. It has a negative effect on education system. This is all about my research. If there is any other question, Mr. Francis. All right, Mr. thank Francis. you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. It's a widely explanation, Mr. Wazi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank adding, you. adding to it, uh, like recently I've been uh, doing research on educational system of uh, Indonesia and Pakistan. So soon it will be published and uh, hope to be to have a collaboration as well as share uh, that paper with you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Afsan. Now, may I give you a question? Yes, why not? Yeah. You can ask any question. All right. So, yeah. yeah, um, I really agree that the political that the politics have very big impact on a very big role in the educations and actually educations itself have a you know like big impact on the political itself. Uh, it's like a paradoxical change, you know, and because you uh because actually I learn about political right now so I think it's a very interesting um topic to talk about but I really really wanted to know your opinion Mr. Wazir because this is your research and uh and I think that you more knowing uh the field of education itself so what is your opinion uh, for the policies that suitable on the Pakistan for learning focused education that you mean on your paper, you know, like because you already researched for this, that it means that you already knowing or uh, manage your uh thoughts about this. This policy is actually the suitable for uh educations, uh in Pakistan. According to my research, I think that the best policy for the education will be the policy when. Teachers are also part of the policy making system. When teachers and civil society are the part of the policy making system, so they are the key beneficiaries of someone who are working at the ground level. If you are a teacher, so you can understand better 
your students you can better understand the environment and if there is someone who is coming from outside and just visiting your school for one hour and he suggests you that this way you have to teach and this is the curriculum these are the books and you have to follow this plan so who is the best one to decide how to teach and how to make the policies a teacher is someone who is better or someone who is only a politician who has nothing to do with education who is who maybe has not already finished his school he is better for someone who has done phd in education who has been doing research in usa uk germany malaysia indonesia or somewhere else this is the basic question which i have raised in the in this research paper that those policy makers must be those people who have been writing books for education those who are doing research in education sector and those teachers have been teaching in the schools for 20 years for 30 years those who have the experience of schooling system those who have already been in the classroom for 20 years they 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 are really mature enough to understand the basic problems of the students basic problems of the education system and basic problems of children how they must be taught but here policy makers are those people who has no interest in education at all they don't even have any experience of education after they finish their schooling or college they never uh, attended any lecture on education if today dr romana is a professor and she has been teaching for 30 years so she is she has better understanding of education or a student who just enrolled in bachelor of education so who who has more experience more exposure and more understanding of the education system these are the basic questions which we have to answer we need we as a researcher as a educationist as a teacher this is my responsibility to make sure that i share these things with policy makers and policy making must be done by these people not by just political elite who has nothing to do with education because tomorrow we have to send our children to those schools policy makers children will go to the private schools they don't care about this education system so these are the basic basic questions i hope you can understand better and now you can make more questions to ask okay yeah, thank you so much mr wazir i think that uh mrs salita has a question for you yeah uh, wait. <laughs> i think she uh yeah miss salita is there all right uh okay maybe um another participant is there is any question for mr wazir or maybe not only a question but uh opinion or uh yeah or lighten our discussion professor megawati is also here maybe she has a question sorry mr wazir professor megawati was there ah oh, professor megawati do you have any question for uh, mr wazir Uh, Mrs. Salita, uh, you have a question, right? Yeah, right. Uh, time is yours. Uh, can I answer a uh, question? Can I uh, question? Yes, yes, you can ask me a question. Mr. Vazir Ali. Uh, I have a question. Is there technology-based learning in Pakistan? And what kind of technology are used? And what do you think how uh, professorly they are used, uh, used in touching? 
in our schooling system, still in the public sector schools, there isn't any use of technology. Only we are given a computer to just maintain our records. But if we talk about the higher education system, in universities, definitely we have uh, the usage of technology over there. Uh, teachers are using similar facilities, which almost you have in your universities uh, in Georgia or other parts of Europe or uh, other parts of the world. But in our education schooling system, we don't have such facilities because uh, I have mentioned in my presentation that we don't have the buildings where our teacher has to teach. Our teachers are teaching under the shade of trees. And uh, we live in India where we have almost floods after every third or fourth year. So teachers have to teach at their home. They facilitate their students and they try to make sure that the students get education. Or we use tents for the purpose of teaching. So you cannot imagine that how suffering environment we have. And if you are a woman, so you can understand that if there is a girl of the age of 10 to 15 years, and if she has to go to school and there is no toilet to be used, so how suffering and the situation is for her. So this is the real condition in Pakistan. So how you can imagine that there can be a good environment for your technology in this country. Thank you so much for us. Thank you. Thank you for your, thank you for your question. Okay, next we have uh, Mr. Tahir Nawaz um, to ask your question. So Mr. Tahir, uh, time is yours. Yes. Uh, I have a question from Mr. Bazir Ali that how to bridge the gap between the primary educational system and policy makers in order to address this issue in Pakistani context? Uh, the basic thing, uh, we have to do, make, we have to make sure that there must be a connection between educators and policy makers, which is, which is not uh, something which cannot take place. By sun, such things are possible. If you are at a university, so universities can be the bridge. Because universities are the places where we do research. Researchers can make sure that there must be uh, there must be conferences like this. As today we have been discussing, there must be such webinars between teachers, educators, and university professors. So then policy makers will also join those meetings when these four pillars of education system will sit on the table, then it will really bring fruitful results for the betterment of education. Otherwise, there isn't any other bridge you can connect because a teacher don't have any resources to meet a policy maker. A policy maker has no understanding of teaching. You are, <clears throat> if you have been, you have gone through uh, the public sector schooling, you can better understand. And when a policymaker who has studied, is studied uh, abroad in US and UK, so he cannot understand better the education system, the schooling system. So we need people from ground level. We need people from universities. We need researchers. And then we need those policy makers who are making the policies. Then we have to sit them on the table to do discussions, then better policies can be made. And then if those policies are implemented very well, then we will get the proof to the results. I hope I have answered your question, Bahar Nawaz. Do you agree with this? Uh, yes, sir, I agree with this. I, I, I want to add that. Uh, uh, as your uh, answer that we can aid from grassroots in order to address the national issue or because the one who survive in Pakistan or one who is teaching in Pakistan from primary level or who has served in Pakistan as a university level, he will uh, add more value or 
in order to address this issue. Thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for Mr. Tahir. Now, next we move to Mr. Muhammad Ayub. Uh, not, time is yours. Yes. Yes, of course. Thank you uh, for participating me. Uh, my question is from Mr. Ruhi Ali. Uh, I hear uh, its uh, answer. So now I have a question in my mind. I am from Pakistan. That uh, as uh, Sir said that here in our education system, advanced technology is not present. Uh, I mean, the advanced research is not performed. The student only repeat uh, the old uh, methods, not the research in advanced technology. So how this problem uh, will be solved? Or the whole education system will be changed? Or there, what type of uh, people will bring this change? Thank you, Rudy, for your question. The thing is that uh, change comes slowly. Change never comes automatically in a single day. If you are a researcher, you are doing research. So with the passage of time, we understand the research. If uh, you have your bachelor's in Pakistan, or you did your master's in Pakistan, and you were not provided such uh, facilities for the research. But when you go to a better institute, and you find better chances of research, so you learn from the environment, you learn from your friends, and you learn from your professors. If today uh, you look at uh, international university, almost at every university you will find 2, 3, 5, 10, 20, or more than these numbers, but they are from Pakistan. Maybe they are also from the same institutions where you have studied, where I have studied, where Tahir Nawaz is studying. We are from the same background. We belong to the same people. It depends. It all depends on our ideas and our own hunger, our own dedication, that how much we are committed with our work. If we are not committed, so professor will not teach us. Professor has to guide us on it. Professor will not write a research paper for us. Professor will only make sure that this is the way and if you will follow the path, you will find the success. And this is something which we lack in Pakistan. We only rely on others. We do not want to be committed. And if if we do something really with the passion, if that is not uh, studied or we are not given the right answer on the right time, we feel hurt and we stop working. This is something which we have to realize that something it is not important that every time we are addressed very well but we have to focus if we have the focus we have the determination we have the dedication so finally we will get the back results. i hope you understand you uh, yes thank you sir thank you yes sir i understand it as you say uh, when the student did not uh, receive the give the right answer at the right time. So, of course, here a problem will be created. If they receive the answer, so I think the problem will be solved in that time. It is, it is the main thing. But we also have to be committed with our work. If we yes. are not committed, so no one can do anything for us. Yes, of course, sir. It is our responsibility. Yeah, thank you so much to Mr. Muhammad Ayub. Now, next we have a uh, last uh, uh, participant to for give a question. This is um, Mrs. Zakia Samo. Yeah, time is yours. Thank you so much for the, uh, in addition to part six on French. Um, I'm from Pakistan, but I'm uh, I'm so, so I'm sorry, Mrs. Zakia. Some uh, the voice is not really clear. Voice problem. Please make sure that it is something we cannot understand. Uh, uh, Mrs. Zakia. 
Wait a minute. Uh, Mrs. Takia, your voice is uh, using using evac. Please um, change it to yeah. the original one. Your original voice is not coming, so please. Yeah. Uh, please change to the original voice. And I think Mr. Abubakar. Okay, let's has... let's move uh to Mr. Adamu first, then Zakia last, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Adamu, please. Uh, give you a question. Time is yours. No. Uh, first of all, I want to thank and uh, uh, congratulate the presenters, more especially uh, our able uh, Dr. Wazir, uh, more especially thank concerning you. what you talk in your presentation, concerning the role of politicians in educational sector. I believe now we are in the era of politics all over the world they are trying to shift their leadership into political leadership. That is means democracy. Here in Nigeria uh, and most African countries, now we are under political uh, leadership system. And uh, most of our leaders, they are politicians. So they are trying to hijack educational policies in order to give room to have power and opportunity over ruling the public schools. Here in Nigeria, we are operating two types of uh, educational system. One, we have public schools. Two, we have private schools. Public schools are monitored and uh, are under government uh, uh, leadership or administration, while the private schools are depend on the citizens. If I have money, I have experience, I will go and choose a location, build a school, and try to operate my school, maybe based on the rules and regulation coming from government side. So this makes 60, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the citizens in the country, they are poor. So they are unable to pay huge amount of money in order to enroll their children in private schools. While those public schools that are under government, politicians are the one who are ruling the government. They are the one who are appointing the leaders of these public institutions. And then they are the one who are building and establishing uh, private schools. So they don't want people to take their children to government schools, that is why they prefer in operating private schools. So we need to address this challenge in order to allow low-income people or low-income earners to enroll their children into school in order to maintain this issue of education for all policy uh, from the UN. So really, this problem is not problem only in our country or in our continent. It's a worldwide problem, more especially in African countries, more especially in my country, Nigeria. That is what I want to say. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Abu You have only two education systems in your country, but we have more than two. We have a public sector where students go to uh, government schools. Then we have two public sector schools. One is very cheap one where poor people can afford and one is, which is uh, American and British school system where wealthy people send their children. And fourth one, there is a mother education system where only those people send their children who want their children to get Islamic education. So we have four different degrees of students in Pakistan. So, it is comparatively very different, different scenario in Pakistan. So we will move towards uh, other questions. I think uh, Zakia Samo has a question. 
Yeah, because we have limited time, so I think that we just uh, choose one uh, pr a participant to give a question, right? We have Zakia Samo again. Uh, are you ready, Mrs. Zakia? Yeah, thank you. Am okay. I am I clear? Like, am yeah, I yeah, audible clear. to everyone? Yes. 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 Thank you yes. so much for giving me the chance to speak for on this prestigious uh, platform. Uh, I'm from Pakistan, but I'm currently pursuing my master's in uh, Beijing. So uh, I have I want to take I want to have your take on the fact that uh, currently there has been enhancement in AI technologies, which students are very familiar to and they are really uh, intact with these technologies. Uh, don't you think that we need to have this educational uh, system change or reform in Pakistan? Because there are a lot of general degrees or uh, 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 education, uh, educational degrees that are being pursued heavily by everyone, think their value decreased every day. And we should be focusing on the degrees or the educations which have this skill of technological skill. Because in I think in the near future, there'd be no demand of these degrees like uh, uh, which are very popular in our countries and universities are selling these degrees. I think if we if we are if we are trying to move to this technological era, do do you think what is what's your take on this uh, educational or shift or this paradigm shift that we really need in our country? Because otherwise we'd be left behind and there'd be no space for us. you have the most wonderful and relevant question to our education system because uh, you know why we suffer a lot when we uh, go abroad after being selected for PhD, PhDs and masters. We have a lot of degrees, but those degrees are only piece of papers. And now I have arrived in Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Nurla will also support my argument that here a student in bachelor's is doing research from fifth semester. But in Pakistan, a student who has graduated, he even he even doesn't know that what is the meaning of qualitative research or quantitative research because we are not taught these things and we get the degree because we just complete the credit hours. A student who has done master's for master degree for MS and they are awarded the degree but they don't know what is what was the real method they have used for the research and when they arrive in, in Indonesia, Malaysia or they go to Japan, or they get the position at even US, when they go there, they find everything very hard, which is very difficult for them because they don't know the research, they don't know anything about this. And Pakistan and the education system of Pakistan, we just focused on uh, the primary education or the secondary education, but we have the question from higher education, which is most more relevant to our study at the point that we sell degrees, we do not give them education. When they don't have education, it means they are unable to understand one. And today we are talking about AI, we are talking about chat GPT, and we are talking about something where we have to make sure that we move towards uh, the advancement of uh, technology. If we say, if we comparatively look at our neighbors, China, India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, they are far, far better in the education sector than us. Why we are behind them? Because we just sell the degrees. Even in Pakistan, 90% of the PhDs, they don't know how to write a scopus paper. They just do it by buying the papers, by lending money. So this is the huge problem. This is crime we are we have been committed we have been committing for the last 75 years we have to stop this and we have to make sure that we we produce a real product when the students from Pakistan get a scholarship at China Malaysia Indonesia when they go there professors feel that they will do really hard work but when they go there they are not aware of anything because they are not up those things. 
and even they are also not committed with those things. When professors in Pakistan are teaching us, they are forcing us for research, we run away and we try to make, make excuses and we just try to get the degree. And when we get the degree, that piece of paper is not worthy enough. I think so that you have got a point and we will uh, move quickly to Savera and Ahmed because we have only two questions. Then we Thank you so much. Our next agenda. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Mrs. Uh, Zakia. Uh, because our presenter is very pleased to answer the question, so let's we open for uh, next question, right? <laughs> uh, we have um, Mr. Muhammad Abdullah Ibrahim. Uh, are you ready to give a question? Assalamualaikum. Okay. Let's yes, we want to ask yeah. uh, a question. So basic, uh, this question belongs to Sarazi. Uh, so basically, our institutional criteria is not about match the industrial level. I belong to the software field. I am a software engineer right now. Uh, but during the uh, uh, my graduation, when I completed it, I found that we are far away from the technology. What we are studying in our campuses or universities is not about that. Uh, if I talk about my field, then I can say that uh, if uh, we are uh, using Java yeah, uh, or advanced uh, languages in your uh, industrial level, but we are getting information or courses or education about the basics of that. We are not having such. Uh, uh, I I am I mean to say, it's a huge I, gap. I, I, I understand. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad yeah, that your question is relevant uh, with the technologies which uh, have been taught around the world and the technologies we have been taught in Pakistan, which are not relevant to each other because we do not focus on curriculum reforms in our higher education. We still use uh, those books written 20 years back and we still follow those policies which were implemented maybe decades ago because we do not want to advance. We, we just focus on the buildings. We make new buildings but we do not make educational reforms which are more important for the progress and prosperity. And when our students, after doing bachelor's or master's, go to abroad for doing their PhD, they have to learn everything from the basics. So this is the huge problem which we face at the moment. So I think uh, we have to move towards uh, Samira Nadim for the last question. Samira, do you hear? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for giving that opportunity. Uh, I want to say that I am a uh, postgraduate student uh, and uh, I have very, very little interaction with research area and uh, within a very short time, I learned a lot. And uh, I think it depends on us, not uh, depends on our education system uh, until we want to learn anything. Uh, it's all depends on us. When we are uh, bachelor students, uh, we never want to uh, learn anything, and we uh, never want to listen what our lecturers are trying to teach us. But now, uh, when I'm postgraduate student and uh, I want to, and I'm seeking the uh, further studies, I have uh, developed my trust. So that helped me to learn about research. And uh, recently, within almost one year, I learned a lot of about research and what is qualitative and what is quantitative. It's uh, I think it's all depends on us uh, that what kind of Samira, research we want. Samira, there is a saying in Urdu that Piyasa the the thirsty one goes to find the water. If you need education, you you want to learn something, and you are curious, so you will focus on those things. If you are not curious, you do not want to learn, professor will not force you, or professor will not take you uh, to class. It's only up to you that what you want to learn and what are your interests. If
if you are really interested in learning anything, you can learn for, by any way. If you are not interested, so at the moment, professors are very much busy in their research, their classes and uh, their activities. So they do not care about that. We can't blame uh, for everything to the professors. Even we have to blame ourselves. I already mentioned it during my presentation that it is not the only task of a professor. Professor will teach us and professors are teaching. But if we are not committed with uh, ourselves, we cannot do anything. If we are committed, there will be so many people who will help us. If we are not committed, no one cares. If today you, are, you have presented a paper in the conference, it means you are committed, you are doing your work. If you are not doing your assignments, you are not doing your homework, you are not dedicated, so nothing will be better for you. I think uh, I have answered your question. If anyone is still has any question, otherwise we have to move to our uh, other agenda. Yeah, Irfan, I really agree with you that uh, in Pakistan, we mostly focus on uh, uh, scores, CGPA, but we do not focus on learning. When we get four out of four, when we are interviewed by a professor for uh, the PhD or MS, then we fail, and then we are unable to answer anything. So we have to focus on learning, not on the scores or side effects. Arla, are you here? Do you listen to me? Can we have? Yeah, uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm so yeah. sorry, Mr. Wazir. I have a, I have a trouble of connections here. So, is that is that already finished to your session? I think if we have uh, our other participants, otherwise we have to keep continuing our conference like this. <laughs> we don't have I, any other options. Uh, I think that we have uh, the last. Participant, uh, sorry, the, the last um, speaker. Yes, if we have a speaker, so we presenters. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Dick J. Is Mr. Dick J already with us? Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. All right. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, so are you ready to present your uh, material? Ah, yeah, sure. Give me All a right. minute. Yeah, okay. Now we have the last uh, presenters for today. Um, so a kindly reminder for all the participants, um, we will have a quiz to, uh, yeah, to give a door prize for all the participants who have actively and can answer the quiz. So uh, please pay attention for all the materials because uh, my, my questions will be, uh, based on that materials, right? So yeah, uh, let's go to uh, move to Mr. Dick Fiji. Time is yours. Yeah, Mr. Dick PJ. Yes, sir. maybe he has some. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. He fixing his internet connection, so let him be on now. Give me a minute, ma'am. I'm just connected with my laptop. Give me a minute.
Um, Mr. Dick Vijay, maybe uh, we can help you to, do you want to share us your uh, presentation or? If, if you want to share, you can uh, reach our uh, committee on the group. So yeah, we can share it for you. Uh, give me ma'am one minute, because I'm just connecting with my laptop. Oh, okay, okay. Some issues in with my phone too. All right. My screen is visible, ma'am. I'm sorry, mister. My screen is visible now. Uh, not yet. Now is it visible? No. I think some issue from my side, I'm unable to share the screen. Okay, uh, how about uh, we move to uh, we move to Mr. Abdul Hadis first, then uh, Mr. Dick Vijay after that. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, to Mr. 
Uh, so to Professor uh, Abdul Hadis, are you ready to present your material? Hi, good afternoon, uh, Miss. I'm sorry, uh, I represent for the Professor Abdul Hadis because he can attend for this event. He have an urgent activity, so I have represent the presentation. Can I? Uh, uh, let me ask about uh, the committee first because uh, you okay. represent of uh, Mr. Abdul Hadis. Okay. Yeah, so uh, for Abdul Hadis percent, I think that we need to wait a uh, decision, the decisions for, uh, from committee to uh, allow you uh, pres present your, uh, is that your father? Is it? Yes, Abdul yes. Hadis is your father? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, like we need to, uh, I got the permissions for that first from committee, then, uh, yeah, then, yeah, I will give you time. But nowadays it's not really, uh, we, we don't get the permission yet. So I think we just give uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Big VJ time to present his materials. Is that okay, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Okay. what? Okay, uh, Mrs. who? With Mrs. who? Mrs. Ilmi. Okay, Miss okay. Ilmi. All right. Yes. Now, uh, for Dr. Dick VJ, um, are you ready to present your material? Ah, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. I'm ready. All right. Okay. Uh, time is yours. Okay. So good uh, good morning to all of you. So I'm giving the presentation on the big data and AI and their application. Uh, myself, Dr. Dick Vijay Pandey, working in technical of Department of Technical Education, Government of India, Government of UP, India. So it is, a, it is a kind of knowledge sharing session. So today agenda okay. is... Can yeah, yeah, some network issues. I think we are facing. Yeah, it's audible now. Coming twice. It is audible, but the device is coming twice. Okay. So today agenda is introduction to the MATLAB math work, importing and exporting the data, and uh, pre-processing the time series data, and introduction of machine learning and deep learning applications and their current time uses. So before we use AI and 
machine learning, we have used some platform. So either we can use PHP and we can use the math work. So nowadays, math work is accelerating the pace of the engineering and the science. So most of the company, business, and government university sites are using the math lab. And most of the auto manufacturers companies are also using the math work software. And aerospace companies is also using the math work. And a lot of, apart from this, three out of the top five internet companies also using the math work. So math work is a kind of software which gives the industry standard and high level programming language for algorithm development, numeric computations and data analysis and visualizations. And one, apart from this, we have one more uh, sibling is there. And this is the leading environment for modeling, simulating and implementing the dynamic and embedded system. application and their application in the lot of engineering fields like control, signal processing, communications, physical modeling, and other system like education system, we are also using some kind of software for uh, emotion detections and etc. cetera. So these are the key industries where we use the MATLAB and Simulink software like aerospace and defense. Professor, my slide is visible or not? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, sir. But, and, uh, still, like... but, but still you are at uh, big data, I mean, yeah, only the first it's, slide. It's not changing. No, it is not changing. Okay, okay, okay. I think we get it. I think some network issues are here. So that's but sir, you have to keep continuing because you're running out of time. Please keep continuing. It's changing now. Still, it is. I can't see that he has. Nurla, do you see that it's like changing or? Uh, no, no. No, it is going to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Professor, I think some network issue I'm unable to present. <laughs> Nurla, can we move to the other speaker? Ah, yes. He still has any problem, so he must solve and we do it again. So we can wait for him. Nurla, do you listen? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, all right, because uh, Mr. Dick Vijay have kind of trouble there. I think that it's very wise to uh, move uh, to our next presenters. We have Mrs. Gilmi represent his father, Abdul, uh, Professor Dr. Abdul Hadis. Um, Miss Ilmi, are you with us? Yeah, Miss. Here. I'm ready for presenting. Okay, so we have to do this. Uh, Mrs. Ilmi? Yeah, yeah, Miss. Oh. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Ilmi, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, are you ready to uh, present your material? Uh, okay, Miss. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, wait a minute. I think that Mr. Mr. Dick Vijay need to uh, close the shares, uh, share screen. Mr. Dick Vijay, um, I would like to ask you to close the share. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. I'm trying. Okay, okay. Yeah, until you fin until you ready game. Or, or maybe uh, Mrs. Uh, sorry, Mr. Dick Vijay can uh leave first, then come back again. I think you need to refresh your PC first. Okay, all right. Yeah, Mrs. Uh, Ilmi, time is yours. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Now I like to presenting the result of the research, the global connection through analysis difference and similarity culture between Bugis Makassar with Japan. Introduction, the fact shows that Japan is one of the most advanced country in technology and science, but don't forget about the transfer of good values to people. Therefore, Japan is one of the countries that has a clean culture and polite culture that is exemplary by other countries. This is because it continues to practice the culture of its ancestors and local wisdom of character education as curriculum priority for early childhood education and kindergarten age. Therefore, the research team is interested in researching the similarities and difference between Bugis, Makassar, and Japan culture from the perspective of education system, tradition, customs, mindset, and behavior. Method of this research Researching the similarities and the difference between Bugis, Makassar, and Japan culture from the perspective of education system, tradition, customs, mindset, and behavior. And then research design is descriptive qualitative, data, coll data collection technique, questionnaire, interview, and observation, data analysis technique, descriptive analysis, and research kind is survey because the goals of this research is analysis the similarities and the difference between Bugis Makassar and Japan culture from the perspective of education system, traditions, customs, mindset, and behavior. Result and discussion. The difference between culture Japan and Bugis Makassar is transfer of good value to people's Early age is childhood education and in the garden, in kindergarten age in Japan. But in Bugis Makassar, majority at elementary school and similarity between cultures, Japan and Bugis Makassar is tradition and customs support, support to the nation, national education system. The very striking difference between the culture of Japan mindset and Bugis Makassar is mindset and behavior pattern of Japan is the smart and hard work, creative, productive, and innovative, but some of Bugis Makassar people have a prison-oriented mindset, so they show behavior that is less, less hard and smart less creative, less innovative, less learning hard and smart, less discipline, less visionary, and less consistent in working hard and smart. So they do not master science and technology. And then the conclusion is the, that there are cultural similarities between Japan and Bugis Makassar seen 
from the perspective of the educational system of transferring culture values of discipline courtesy and corpor corporation and the difference is the the transfer of culture is carried out from two different age so that at the level of early childhood education in the kindergarten the education system is character education the significant difference is in the mindset and behavior patterns namely japan has a mindset of the present and the future so they just so that Japan people we have hard and smart work, creative, innovative, productive, visionary, discipline, and consistent in hard and smart work. Hard and smart learning, so as to master science and technology, while some Bagsmakasar people have to opposite mind and behavior. Uh, I think that's enough to present the Research of research of Prof. Abdul Hadis. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Nurla, can we open the forum for the questions? Yeah. Uh... To Mr. Riyadil Agra, uh, we would like to inform you, please, on, uh, please mute your uh, audio, so yeah, we can really focus on that. Yeah. Can Can the operator please unmute Riyadil Agra, please? All right. Uh, to Mr. Who is this? I don't really. I can't really uh mention your name because Arsalan, it's Arsalan, used. Arsalan, 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 you can ask me a question. Arsalan, okay. 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 I have a question that uh, how you compare the primary level education uh, of Madagascar people with the head of Japan, like in your uh, research, or it is specific to only the higher education? Sorry, Mister, I can't hear your voice clearly. Can you write down in the chat room? Oh, I'm so sorry, uh, Mr. To Mr. Yadil Agra, I hope you can uh, mute your voice so, yeah, we can really <laughs> focus on this uh, forum. Okay. Mr. Yadil? Okay, so uh, my, may I repeat the question? Yes, sir. Can you repeat your question? Okay, so I have a question that uh, is it specific to the primary level education, uh, the comparison of uh, Japanese and that of Madagascar people, or uh, it is related to higher education as well? Uh, if so, then how you cope up with the primary education? Okay, thank you, Mr. Arsal. Uh, before I, I never come to Japan before because the research is my father's research. So I can answer the perfectly with your question. I just uh, have an opinion about the best uh, education on the kindergarten and the high education in the university. Um, Based on, we have seen uh, in the social media that Japan have a discipline from the child, uh, from the, the, they have a toddler until they, uh, until they, have a the different discipline with us and in the garden uh, uh, in the Japan they have a uh, learn 
not just because in just not just uh, learn in the classroom but see uh, exercise the skill uh, how to learn the skill life life skill life skill not just to remember and exercise exercise not like in this country All right, that mr Thank you, and I think I have no question. Uh, yes, sir, I have a question. Uh, I, I have a question for a researcher that could you like to share the future incomings for upcoming researchers? And how can the, the upcoming researchers can generalize your research in order to conduct their independent study? Am I audible? Yes, yes, we listen to you. Now you have to wait for the answer. Yes, sir. Sorry, Mr. Can you repeat your question? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, could you like to share the future incomings for future researchers that how your research can be helpful for them in order to conduct their independent study? Okay, the future research. Uh, just for the disciplinary between, we can learn from the Japan disciplinary and from the hard work from the Japan. And for this researcher, we can learn about how we teach our student, how we teach our student to have a to have a life skill in the future, not just for remembering the theory and, and then write down in the paper, not just for that, but we have to, we, uh, we have uh, teach our students to have a life skill in the future, like that, Mr. Not just to remember the theory and then uh, they forget after they uh, graduate. Yeah, how, 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 Mr. Tahir, is that clear? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Is that okay. Answer All right. Uh, uh, so, Miss Ilmi, I, I think that I have kind of like opinion about the topic. Uh, I don't, I don't really quite agree with the opposite of, um, but the opposite, is, huh? Sorry? There is, uh, there is a question, uh, there is, Raised by someone oh. named Ria de Lagra. Maybe she wants to ask a question. Oh, Mr. Ria de Lagra? Yeah. Have a question? All right. Okay. I'm sorry. Is, is Miss? Riyadil Agra or uh, Thank Ibu Megawati. Have a question. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I want okay. a question for uh, yeah. ini nih. Uh, as the title, the global the global connection through uh, analysis the friends uh, and similarity culture between Bugis Makassar. Uh, my question is, uh, just want to know uh, the similarity of the culture between Bugis Makassar and with Japan, because uh, I come from Bugis Makassar, actually. Uh, and then, how far the influence for you uh, can implementation in your life, especially for teach for your students in, in, in Bugis Makassar, especially. I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mom. The similarities, the culture between Japan and Indonesian, specifically for Bugis Makassar, is gotong royong in, in Indonesian 
<laughs> language <laughs> gotong royong cooperative cooperation ya aku mah anak saya bahasa Indonesia aja ya mami iya kalau in Indonesia Japan society Uh, mereka lebih aware sama tetangga, meskipun dalam kehidupannya mereka agak lebih uh, tertutup. Mereka, mereka tetap uh, fokus pada pekerjaan, tapi kalau saat tetangganya butuh bah- bantuan, mereka nggak bakalan segan-segan untuk membantu <laughs> teman-temannya, tetangganya. kayak gitu. Terus mereka tuh nggak uh, punya waktu banyak buat ngobrolin, keburukan-keburukan orang jadi mereka memang benar-benar fokus sama kerjaan mereka masing-masing itu kayaknya tidak ada waktu sih iya nggak ada waktu buat uh, uh, hal-hal yang tidak berguna jadi kayaknya waktunya mereka fokus untuk menghasilkan karya terus makanya mereka setelah di bom bisa langsung bangkit dalam dua tahun saja sudah langsung merdekaan bangkit kembali seperti itu mam Oke, okay, thank you for your answer. <laughs> But how about the other? I can understand what you say. I'm sorry for the other. You can understand what I. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Welcome, mom. Mr. Wazir, uh, there is a question. Uh, there is a uh, yeah, audience Francis, who wants to get There is Francis Sanga who asked the question. Francis, can you hear to us? Yeah, All right. Please, please uh, thank you, Mr. Wazir. All right, I want to ask to uh, present it to Mr. Uh, Professor uh, Amina. Is, uh, is his, uh, his daughter. Uh, what's the same and different between Japanese view and Makassar view in mitigation one case? And what will this Makassar society view for the global issue when we know that the recent issue, uh, uh, especially for SDGs, sustainable, uh, sustainable development goals that can bring for Indonesians uh, advance? I think that's enough. Thank you. Is it clear, sir? Hello? Hello, Mr. Yes, it's clear, is, is it clear? It's not my uh-huh. research, so I can answer your question perfectly, sir. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. So, uh, okay, uh, let me, let, okay. Uh, my question is, what the Bugis Makassar behavior or view when they have one case, how do they solve uh, the issue? I want to know about uh, their uh, their response in one issue uh, and then to teach their children uh, to, to handle uh, to handling or to mitigate a uh, situation or a uh, case. What do you think about it? Especially for the Bugis Makassar tradition, culture, they have to discuss before uh, to solve the problem sir so uh, we solve it to get together not just one person solve this problem but all of us have to discuss what is the best solution for the problem and um, i think all of the countries have the same things to do to solve the problem Like that, sorry. I'm so sorry. I can uh, answer your question like your hope. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. All right. So, yeah. Uh, I, can I have uh, some time to give my opinions about the topic? Is okay. this okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm not real. I'm not a give a question, but maybe just um share my thoughts about this topic. Uh, like what I said before that uh, it is we have kind of like similarities between uh Japanese cultures and uh Bugis Makassar uh cultures, but uh 
in the conclusions, I see that there there is a uh, opposite between them, right? I see. Uh, but I think it's not that really, really, really distinctive the opposite, because as we know, uh, maybe uh, Mister, uh, sorry, Professor Abdullah is knowing um the the term of the concept of uh Siri Napache, and you know. Uh, that's yeah, yeah. the yeah yeah say it means that um it's it's better we die than we can't then we can't get what we uh aim for what our what our goals it's better we die than if we're not uh it's better we die than we can't get our goal that's that's the mean of the Sir Napache and um you know the the concept of dignity and what um pride is very big in the Bugis Pakasar uh, uh cultures, and I I know that uh, nowadays that the 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 cultures and the concept of life is not really uh showing uh in our uh in our generation nowadays that. Yeah, that's that's what I over to to analyze it more, and you know, from that we can strength strengthen our concept from uh for that. So, um, we can reach the the level of uh, similarities from uh the cultures of the Japan because you know, like Japanese actually have kind of the um the concept of life too. Like you, you already know that the hirakiri concept that yeah uh they 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 kill their self because um failed of something it's it's same with the siri uh concept of life yeah so but the difference is in our uh generations we don't really knowing about the concept yeah uh anymore. Because yeah, because the our education is you know transforming for the modern era and uh the sense of the sense of uh cultural moral like Sirnapachi itself is not that really showing in our uh societies especially in our um communities uh ethnic communities Bugis Makassar so yeah I mean like I just over this uh this this concept uh, to research it more uh, for Mr. Abdul Hadis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my opinion for this uh, topic. Okay, thank you. So we have to move towards our uh, other agenda. Maybe we are I'm sorry, Mr. Wazir, I we can't really hear you. I'm saying that we are running out of the time and we have to finish the conference. Do you hear? Uh, how about Mr. Big PJ? Let's see if he can present his paper. Otherwise, we are running out of the time because it is almost three thirty, and we have started at eleven thirty. We have to invite Dr. Rohana for the. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. We can't really hear you. I'm sorry, Mr. Wazir. Your your voice is so. <laughs> it's so quiet. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. Okay, can you repeat once again? Okay. okay. All right, so we move to... Do you listen? Do you listen to me now? Okay, I understand that we running off our time. So yes. we move to the next session, right? Yes, and we have to... All right, okay. All right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wazir. So... uh. That's all uh, our participants for presenting their materials. Uh, now we have a quiz session. Actually, this is a quiz session for the door prize. So the committee um, have a door prize for uh, the participants. But I think it's, uh, yeah, it's fair. 
if I give a question first or a quiz, then the participant asks, uh, sorry, answer the quiz, uh, answer the quiz. And yeah, from that, I will give, um, I will give the prize for the participant who have contributions for this event. And yeah, uh, for, for the participant who got the prize, you can reach, uh, our committee from the group uh whatsapp whatsapp group yeah please reach our committee for uh, get your prize now um let me give uh, some questions and please raise your hand if you who won the prize not yet <laughs> not yet <laughs> yeah um please answer my question first then if you can answer correctly my questions i will give you a prize that's how it works <laughs> all right now um uh first question all right please raise your hand if you knowing the answer what is the advantages of technology on the education please mention at least two advantages yeah okay mr Tahir can you repeat it please Oh, all right. Uh, I'm so sorry. I have uh, Mr. Tahir Nawas uh, to answer my question. Can you repeat it, please? Okay. What is the advantages of technology on education? Please mention at least two advantages. Yes. I am audible myself, Tahir Nawas. Uh, so I, will, I am answering this question. Uh, th yeah, there okay. No there are multiple uh, multiple technologies nowadays in uh, which are advancing the education first uh, first mm. i would like to uh, first i would like to aid the multimedia multi digital multimedia in the classrooms in order that how they are advancing the education system in um, and number second is the modern classroom in which the students are interacting with their ipads uh, and uh, the computer pro uh, computers in order to study and they are uh, accessing the digital library uh, number second is that and number third is uh, number th third is we are uh, when we use uh, uh, when we use only interactive class is a class study we are when we work on a skill set like earlier a uh, presenter show, uh, shared that in japan uh, they are uh, more focused on uh, practical activities in the classrooms so these are i think these are the most advanced in the digital era or today's era uh, that's my answer thank you so much all right thank you so much mr tahir nawas okay we have uh mr tahir nawas to answer my first question next question is what is solutions for obstacles using technology in learning process please mention one solution okay may okay yeah i'm so sorry what is your name i can't really read your name it's just in arabic it's a script, like it's uh, arsalan Ar arslan yeah okay uh, yeah, so uh, like your question is technological advancement, right? The what so solution for the obstacle of technology in learning okay. process? Also, okay, so the accessible. Uh, the best thing is to ex uh, the access of internet to every every student. So this is this is the best thing, like to roll out to urban areas. So that they can easily access and uh, through access of that they can easily access the technology and uh, the education. Okay. 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> what? I'm, I can't really hear you, Mr. Wazir. Uh, we have a participant. We have what? Presenters. Okay, I mean, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Let's we let's we yeah. Uh, 
postponed our quiz first because we have the last the less uh presenters who will uh present their his material. Who? He's from Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will give your uh, I will give a uh, time for Mr. Wazir to handle it. Is that okay, Mr. Wazir? Okay. Let me ask him to present his paper. Jimmy, Jimmy Sega, are you here? Will you listen to us? Jimmy Sega, will you listen to us? Hello? Norla, do you listen to me? Yeah. So we have the last presenter from Nigeria. Let's we call once again. Yes. We have to... Hello. Hello. Okay. Oh. Uh, yes, ma'am. I will. I will try once again for sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dick PJ, that's okay if you can't share your uh, screen. You can um, still present your materials without uh, PowerPoint. I think it's better like that. Okay, but can... okay, I think today, today I'm facing some internet issue. Yeah, but we are also running short of time. If you can finish quickly, so please start the presentation. Yes, okay, okay. Thank, okay, you. okay. Thank you. So today, today presentation is about my big data and artificial intelligence and their application in the different field. So, so any application while implementing the artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, we need a software that is MATLAB or PHP software, open tool software. But before we start this, nowadays ma many companies and organizations are using the MATLAB and Simlink softwares, like Honeywell, Twita company, Ford, lot of companies are there who are using the MATLAB softwares. And there are a lot of industries like uh, aerospace defense, automotive, biological science, biotech technologies, communications, railway system, semiconductor device, software, internet. We are using the MATLAB software. So it is very simple for the researchers who don't have the access of MATLAB software. They can, uh, they have like a one month free trial version. So simply the researchers have to create account or a math work account using their official email IDs. And, 
and work their research in different domains. So using the browser, researcher can do their simulation work, they can build their uh, modules and their models and drive their results and prepare their research work and publish in the renowned journals. So, so in this software, we simply import and export data using in different forms. One, one way we can export the Excel spreadsheet and we can, and another way we can directly export the images or data from the websites. And, and after that, we explore the data to identify the trends and test the hypothesis and estimate the uncertainty there. And after that, we customize our algorithm based on the data and and visualizations and the models for getting the scope of our models and the accuracy. So in this, we have some standard formats to export the data. Some MET files we can use and some others like we can export directly the audio files, video files, XML files for 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 data. And we can also use some commands in MATLAB to explore, export the data directly from the website. We use some standard commands like web read, web write, web save options to just export the data directly from the websites. So our main question is why MATLAB for artificial intelligence? So we believe the recognition demonstrations or ability to empower your team, researchers, including with those limited AI and data science experience. And it provides a complete workflow for the data preparations, AI modeling system design and productions. And it deploy the AI models on embedded devices, edges, enterprise systems, and the cloud. So using these simulants, simulants, it tackles the integration challenges and reduces the risk in designing AI-driven systems. So before de before more, uh, implementing any system, we can test that system in that MATLAB software. So before using this, we just get the basic idea what is the artificial intelligence. So this is the ability of the digital computer or robot perform the test commonly associated with intelligent being. And artificial is the bigger domain which consists of machine learning and deep learning. In the machine learning, we can create a model to learn and perform a task directly from the images and text or sound. The practice of the learning a task from the data without relying predetermined equations or models will be done in case of deep learning. So in this direction, we can use 
or analyze larger data set the data set may be a kind of images it is kind of excel or anything we can visualize very easily in the matlab software so so we in the traditional approach of machine learning we just design write a traditional equations and based on that we program our computer but in the case of machine learning we teach the learning according to the intelligence and we get the output there so there are lot of activities where we use machine learning models like human activity detection human emotional recognition and lot of things we can do using this matlab software so machine learning teaches the computer to do what comes naturally to the humans learn from the experience machine learning algorithm uses the computational method to learn information directly from the data without relying on a predetermined equations as a model the algorithm is adaptively improve their performance as the number of samples available for learning is increasing nowadays machine learning use in every everywhere like image recognition techniques speech recognition technique stock predictions medical diagnosis data analysis robotics education systems and others as well we are nowadays we are using to machine learning using the machine learning so there are two types of model in machine learning one is supervised learning and another is unsupervised learning in the supervised learning we develop a predictive model based on the input and the output and in the case of unsupervised learning it group and interpret the data based only on the input data and in this unsupervised learning we use the technique that is clustering for the classification of the data and in the case of supervised learning we use two techniques one is the classification and another is regression technique the main aim of the supervised learning is to build a model that make prediction based on the evidence in the presence of the uncertainty a supervised learning algorithm takes known set of input data and known response to the data and trains the model to generate a reasonable predictions for the response to the new data so here we use lot of machine learning algorithm like logic stick regression technique <coughs> k nearest kenan technique svm technique support vector machine technique neural networks nav based technique decision trees discriminant analysis so these are different kind of models nowadays we are using in in medical imaging speech recognition and credit scoring and i have published two or three papers in the education field using these models so after the session i will share the link there in the regression technique we just predict the continuous response for example like changing the temperature fluctuation in the power demands and typical application of the regression is 
electricity load forecasting and algorithm trading. So this is the overflow of the data. So we have a machine learning model and we provide the data provide the data and after that model model we just speed up the competition and predict the response of the model and we can uh, measure the performance of our model with different parameters like accuracy precision recall factor f1 factor so a lot of performance parameters are there to observe the accuracy of our models so in the case of unsupervised learning we can just find out the hidden pattern or intrinsic structures in the data it is used to draw the interference from the data set consisting of input data without label response in this unsupervised learning, as we already discussed, we use the clustering. It is the most common unsupervised learning technique. And it is used for exploiting any kind of data that have hidden patterns or grouping the data. And the main applications of the unsupervised learning in gene sequence analysis, market research, and object Recommendations. So this is the uh, different uh, what the technique we have with supervised and unsupervised. So how to select the correct model? We use some parameters. We check the speed of the training. How what is <coughs> speed of that model he can grab the data and the memory usage and their accuracy and interpretability so these four parameters we are considering while selecting the correct model in the research so so this is all about uh, machine learning and deep learning and more details are there, but I think it is more interactive if the PPT is, is visible to the participants. So, so I'm just concluding the session here from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Vijay. Thank you for the very informative session. And uh, it was really a great presentation, but sorry due to some internet issues. They could not uh, see the slides or the presentation. So we will just uh, take uh, only two questions and then we will move towards Dr. Rohan because we are going to end our uh, session here. We have only only two, two questions. And uh, as long as you have asked already so many questions, so we will uh, move towards Adi. Uh, there is a question from Adi. Adi, you can ask your question. Well, is my voice clear? So, do, you, do you want to ask any question? Yes. Uh, thank you for the chance. First of all, uh, I'm sorry for turning off uh, my camera since I have the connection problem here. Well, uh, nice to know you, uh, Dr. Uh, Pandi. It was interesting topic talking about uh, AI. Yeah, and my simple question is that, yeah, how do you see or what is your opinion about the, the emergence of artificial artificial intelligence nowadays, does it have a good or bad impact 
on education and also research. Thank you. Dr. Vijay, if you can answer him, please. Uh, yeah, it's very nice questions uh, raised the participants. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, we are uh, seeing a lot of uh, AI tools are there, so which impacts the education system. So, like uh, we heard about the Chat GPT, and similar uh, other tools are there, like in Bird, in case of the Google. So this some kind of uh, really they impact the researchers uh, th those who really work uh, very deeply and they have more knowledge so so their positivities are more compared to the uh, there but in the case of the education system they really impact because they just copy the data from anywhere and just put in throw of you so i think uh, if we considered the positive sense AI is more uh, advantages in the field of medical science, robotics, and uh, uh, social novel cause. Like we, uh, I have developed one model in which a blind person can uh, 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 recognize the words using the images. We simply, uh, the blind person simply click the images, click the images, and they they get uh, what is the written there in the image they can simply hear from their headphones so such kind of models i can develop for the social cause and it will be a uh, wide publications in the springer nature and we get the lot of recognition so th there are some positive and negative thoughts are also for the ai thank you Dr. Vijay. we really missed your presentation and it was very informative session and you are also doing very noble things you have noble cause uh, through the using of technology but uh, due to lack of time we could not hold on in this session so we will move towards uh, the end so we will say well, thank you thank you so much uh, dr Dikvijay, for such uh, informative session and uh, sharing so much knowledge with us uh, and uh, we cannot take any other question and we will move towards uh, dr Prabhana for the final uh, sayings from her, because we are at uh, the very end of our conference. So Dr. Rohana, if you are listening, so please uh, turn on the screen and share your thoughts about uh, this conference. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Dr. Rohana, it's up to you now. OK. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go to the of course, we are very happy and very grateful for this. And we have carried out the international conference activities as a basic, as especially to all the committees uh, who has worked hard uh, today to, uh, and preparing to carry out the activities. Uh, this is as especially for thanks to Muhammad Akbar with uh, all the members, okay, the members of the committee. And I thank so much uh, to the uh, person who are the great, very expert uh, in the field. Um, the Honorable Prof. Amir Mahabu is reading in TV, FHD, and the Honorable Dr. Krishna Kumachambang, and the Honorable or Dr. Asings, uh, and then the Honorable Dr. Sunil Namanjara. Uh, all of them, they are great experts in the field. Uh, thank and you so much for the presenters, the very great and valuable. Uh, and present the article with the museum uh, and the discuss with other very cooperative and interactive, so well as the audience uh, who very understand about the co uh, providing question. So that create the academic atmosphere and the scientific uh, knowledge, uh, which is the very 
uh, add our knowledge and the comment it is very valuable for us. Um, I'm very happy with this atmosphere and thank the internet motivation and enthusiasm that uh, we shared uh, and the college and the cattle we went of uh, the opportunity to hold the second international conference as soon as um, as possible we will uh, open the more room for the presenter uh, than now uh, to provide uh, some uh, opportunity to the chat and the student who want to share the knowledge. And then uh, I would like to ask everyone to present here now. And what month do you want to use the whole the next international conference? Okay? It is the challenge of you uh, to answer now. Okay? Uh, do you do you have your advocate to ready to present and publish uh, free in a international journal uh, this is my international journal the are international transformation knowledge and uh, international age to give uh, uh, knowledge uh, and then i hope all of you answer now directly and uh, write the answer uh, in the chat room uh, now give your answer uh, we plan hold another international conference uh, uh, as soon as, uh, as possible, according to the many uh, requests from the participant. And then this accusation, I give the accusation and the respect uh, to the uh, all, uh, the thanks uh, to the all participants and the attendees who have uh, participated during two days of long to the second international conference education language, uh, linguistic, social science, and humanistic culture and uh, science. Uh, activities. I hope this conference will provide uh, the benefit or the advantages uh, for uh, everyone. And all attendants will be given certificate and that's what submit uh, article will be uh, published and the presenter, uh, presenter will be given a certificate as a presenter and the article will be this and thanks for your cooperation. Finally, I apologize if there are errors uh, and so coming in the activities, the international conference, uh, we are the uh, Technological uh, Transformation Education Foundation. We have prepared criticism and suggestion service from the various parties and uh, government uh, construct a criticism so that the Technological transformation foundation advantages uh, for the nation, but uh, what of the nationally and uh, international. Okay, uh, we close the activity, um, uh, the second uh, international conference with great joy and uh, Alhamdulillah, hopefully we can uh, meet again soon uh, to the next conference. Uh, now uh, we closing together uh, we say together alhamdulillah birabbil alamin wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you so much for all uh, thank you thank you professor mahmud for such a wonderful now we try to take a picture together open our camera and then we uh, take a picture Yes, Professor Rohana. May I thank you also? Thank you. Alaikum. Open camera. Yes, One, yes, sir. Two, two, three. Three. Okay. Once again. One, two, two three. three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you, you, thank you so much. I thank, we, you. Thank, uh, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, for your support. Bye bye. And for conducting this nice uh, bye -bye. beautiful conference today. Bye bye. Thank you. 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 The second one is uh, Ibu Megawati. 
The third one is uh, Mr. Tahir Nawaz, and the third one is Arslan. Uh, for all the names that I have mentioned, please reach our committee on the WhatsApp group that you can uh, uh, minimize the price you can have from them, right? Okay, uh, now let me close officially because I am the master of ceremony. Please give me a time to close this. All right. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for your attention and thank you so much for your participation for this um, conference. And um, we finally uh, come to the end of this agenda. Uh, thank you so much for Dr. Krishnan Umar Chandran. Thank you so much for uh, Professor Dr. Rohana as the speakers for, uh, for today. And thank you uh, for uh, Yasir Ali, PhD, as our moder moderator and all the speakers for today's. And of course, thank you so much for all the participants who attend this um, our conference. Uh, so yes, that's that's, uh, that's our that's all our agendas for today. Now, um, I hope that we all have um, had conducted will be useful for all uh, the better world that we put this team today. Thank you so much for attention. Uh, see you uh, on the next uh, occasion. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Best wishes for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.